Oh my God, you're wearing Bombas. I was actually just about to say, do they sponsor your podcast? I've been trying to get them to sponsor my podcast since episode one. They have to sponsor it. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to some people. We are supported by Bombas. You just did a good buddy Rick Glassman's podcast. I did. And when you walked in, what was he wearing? Bombas. He's obsessed, right? And his podcast is called Take Your Shoes Off. And he only wears Bombas. And literally only wears Bombas. And Bombas, if you're listening, I told Rick yeah. you should sponsor it'd be, him. It'd be a crime if he didn't sponsor yes. Rick Glassman. I have done mock Bombas ads. You have? No, I'm really more looking to get into, 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 into bed with Bombas. <laughs> Um, because when your shoes are off, you only see the socks. Yeah, so right. yeah. But before we get started, um, I'm, Bomba socks is what I'm wearing. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm trying to get a sponsorship. So I'm not sponsored by them. Right. But I love Bomba socks. Do you ever wear Bombas? I, know, I have not. I'll have to get you a pair. That'd be awesome. Or perhaps Bombas would want to send us a pair. Yeah, if you don't have a sock sponsor, it's just a tragedy. doesn't make any if sense. If anything, a sock sponsor, right? Yes. These orchids belong to, to the guest, but there's a fan now, so <laughs> I'm really winging it here. <laughs> Scoot doo, blabbity blue, scoop dee, oh yeah! I hear you. Can you hear me? How am I? I hear you. Talk, Great. Talk, talk, talk. But you know what else I hear? The fan. Could we put it, I have it on turbo, which Let's, is just there fast. Yeah. Will you push the... Or whatever, not oh, turbo. Low. But now it's off. No, it's low. Put it on low. I think we could do a medium. How's it feeling low? I feel fine. I'll let you know if I get really hot, but I, I am pretty certain I won't. Okay. I started filming a show, and this is the first episode I've, I've recorded in a few weeks. <gasps> oh my gosh, so we're going to be a little rusty, I hope? I mean, yes, <laughs> to the rusty. I've, I'm, I have, I'm 100 some episodes in. I'm, the rust hasn't gone away. It's more the uh, like, how do yeah i guess that's still rusty but a nerves you know does that make sense yeah like um i don't know where we started this but i did keep you waiting a little bit so i'm, I'm sorry well i kept you waiting full disclosure i i came 20 minutes late and i get really mad at people for being late so i i really hate doing that so i'm really sorry i apologize well i'll tell you how you can make it up to me okay can we move the chair a little bit to your right so <laughs> this thing is an eye line where I'm not looking at this thing? Yes. This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own professional licensed therapist. I want you to start living a happier life today. Listeners get 10% off their first month by visiting BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Tyso. That's BetterHelp dot com slash Tyso for 10% off your first month. Now, back to the show, baby. I think this is, is that better. I can also scooch. no. This is no, no. This is this is so good. Okay, great. All right. So rust, uh, bombas, bombas. I cannot believe bombas is yet to be a sponsor of your show. It will be though. It will be in the next two to three weeks. So you have, and I, I mean, I mean no disrespect <laughs> to not to not assume, but are you that in the game where you say in two to three weeks? Well, I like to you know, box myself in to make it a priority. Do you only get stuff done if it's like? That's a great question. Yes. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I like a deadline very much. And, uh, but I'm, I'm also a pretty good self-starter. Like I don't need, I don't need so much like somebody down my back or anything, but I, I like a hard deadline mainly because I also my schedule is packed. So I need to know, like, tomorrow I'm doing Rick Lassman Bombas uh, at 2. Then at 3, I'm, you know, writing X, Y, and Z or whatever. So when you schedule your day, it's not just what I need to do on a Wednesday. It's these are the times I'm doing it. Yes. It, it, yes. I try. I don't always stick to it, but I try. So uh, is your schedule the way it is? mostly because of the podcast because it's a it's a lot of work yes it is mostly because of the podcast but you know a lot of it is just my own doing like these are things i could uh delegate out some of them 
but I don't. Mm -hmm. I'm really bad at that. Ooh, we're going to get into this. Ugh, I'm so bad at it. I'm so controlling. Yeah, you must not be very happy. I'm not a happy person. Uh -huh. Very miserable. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's really tough. And because I still, you know, I still also work with Kristen, too. So I'm, I'm hanging on to some of those me? duties. I am overseeing her kind of, uh, let's say, life. Is that not an assistant? <laughs> no, it's no longer an assistant. It the, used to be. The assistant's manager? Kind of, kind of. I, I mean, when I started with her, well, you know, I started, I started babysitting and then I started assisting. But then during that assisting process, I kind of just started taking on stuff on my own that that wasn't really assistanty type stuff like i was like oh i'll um i'll write this for you it's you're her like, girlfriend i'm her wife right and her sister and her baby and her mom um and well, i'll write this for you what is this what's something that you would write for her so i think the first thing i wrote for her i don't know if this is like pulling back the curtain too much but she had to do a written interview for I wish I knew which magazine, um, but you know, it was like 10 questions for Kristen Bell and it was, and I, and it was written and I was like, do you want me to just right. take a pass at this? She was like, if you feel comfortable, sure. This was a long time ago at this point. And so I did and she was like, oh, this is great. Okay, good. So, so now I'm pretty much always the person responding to those types of things. And if she does speeches and stuff, I always write those. Um, I, I, I have more questions about that, but I want to, I want to first like acknowledge that I don't want to make this about Kristen and Dax oh that's kind of you to say um but it is a it is where my introduction was and it is uh the t armchair expert and that's right. it's a significant part of it so I don't want to apologize but I do have some uh, origin questions about of that of course there I mean I think this in some ways parallels like Dax's feelings about punked a little bit where he's like, I'm so grateful for it. But at the beginning, oh. he like never really wanted to talk about it. You already feel it. that way? No, I don't at all. But that's what I'm saying. Like, Because we have a camera over here. We Yay! have a camera right there. <laughs> Sorry. I, I don't feel that way at all. But it is, it is my punk, right? It's the thing that I'm always going to get questions about forever right. and ever and ever. And of course I am. Like that's, and I'm happy to because they're a huge part of my everything i have uh what i guess most people who at least like dax there's people that don't like dax and then there's everyone else has a crush on him sure and, um, that's fair and i have for i mean he's like he's the coolest i yeah. talk about him almost every podcast he says hello by the way whatever it doesn't matter <laughs> um you're waiting but for when uh when Kristen was here i i it was like it was almost i was like uh, am i talking about dax too much you know um for her, she would be thinking about it like, oh, people are always talking about a relationship. Maybe yes. I'm projecting that. Right. But I wasn't about the relationship. Yeah. You know, it was just about, you know, Dax told me. <laughs> yeah. Know, like, when I talked to Dax last uh -huh. week. Yeah. Yes. Everyone has that, right? Like this sort of insecurity that they themselves aren't interesting enough or, or the, you know, I, I, I have say a lot you, of you were listing, but that was the only one you said. Do you have other examples? Wait, other examples uh, of... You're like, well, they have that insecurity that they're not interesting enough or what else would it be? Interesting enough or like that they... That they're worthy on their own merit. I think like I have a lot of credit issues in general. I, credit I, issues. Like when I was younger and still, but I, I, I work a lot on it. If I'm not getting credit for the thing I did, mm -hmm. I I really have a hard time with that. Is that why you slipped in the 10 questions? That you wrote for yeah, I'm like, I, I need, <laughs> I and this is also what we do. We we double down on the thing we don't like, right? So I just like wrote all this stuff over and over again, never again yeah, <laughs> yeah. under somebody else's name. And credit by whom? Credit in general. If Kristen said, "I know what you did, you aren't credited for this, but I really appreciate it." But you're like, yeah, but I wish my name was in the mag. Like, at what oh. point? I'm sure it's different here and there. Yeah, not for that because I knew what I was doing, and also Kristen is unbelievable about giving credit where credits do like uh, over the top she's always like oh and then this is my she used to always call me her external hard drive like that's how she would um introduce me and she she's just so, she's so really disrespectful <laughs> you're saying it, you like it it's like well no i'm a <laughs> i'm a person no you're um, an external hard drive no this got so so years ago um 
when I first started working for them, and I was still babysitting, but doing a little more assistant stuff for What Kristen. was the first thing? Was it assistant or babysitting? Babysitting first. First, it was like date night babysitting. And then it was nannying once Delta was born. Like What's the difference? Time. Bet- oh, you're, you're yeah, I was there. on schedule. Uh-huh. I was on a schedule every day with them. And, and then... I think it was when Lincoln was going to school. I think they just still wanted to have me around and they needed to figure out what to do with me. So she was like, do you want to do more assistant stuff? And I was figure like, out what sure. to do with you because they didn't want to lose you. Yeah, but they didn't need so much child right. care. At like that point. keeping you exclusive. Yeah, they wanted to keep me in their pocket. Right. And so I really hope there's a graphic of me in a pocket. At and that speaking point. of which, let me give a big shout out to our animator, Tom. You deserve all the credit you get. We'll do a pocket. And if you don't mind, we will. So, yeah. So sorry, Tom, that we didn't give you enough time to really get in there so quick. Do I need to do it again? No. Are you sure? Yeah. I want to develop this chemistry and I'm interrupting too much. So <laughs> no, let's, you're fine. let's go. Let's go. I'm happy to do it again. Um, okay. So. When we when I first started, I was starting to do assistance assistanty things. Um, Kristen would call me her external hard drive. She she of course referred to me as her best friend. She would never call me her assistant or like my nanny or mm-hmm. someone who works for me. She would never refer to me like that. And um, one time, Dax did an interview, I think on the Jason Ellis radio show, and he was telling a story about me and he said our babysitter and i listened and i was like i don't like that i like i really didn't like being referred to as that even though i a hundred percent was the babysitter at that time but i felt like it minimized the relationship and i didn't like it and it was kind of in direct contrast to Kristen, who was like never calling me that so anyway all to say i have issues do you think if he referred to you as a babysitter now it would bother you as much <laughs> i think um i think i would really like it now actually. no i'm being serious like because you have established yourself publicly as more yeah. than that would it bother you if he said that because people know that isn't all it is is why i asked that that hmm. the answer should be it shouldn't bother me at all now but i bet it still would and I bet that's more of a personal thing. Like, I would feel like, is that, are, are you doing that on purpose? Like, you know, I would just get in my head about, why did you do that? Why did you just call me that? Um, so you're, you're an assistant, uh, you know, you're a babysitter. That's right. You're an assistant. Uh, before you become a uh, assistance manager, <laughs> uh, is there a, uh, a new level? Like, th- do they know you at all? Were you friends before babysitting? A little bit. We had mutual friends, and so um, I would see them at parties and stuff, but barely. I mean, it was just a very acquaintance level knowledge of each other. And then I turn this a little bit. I'm sorry. Yeah. And then I did an episode of House of Lies, Kristen's show, in which I played her assistant. Ironically, uh, friendly with Josh Lawson, but he is. I think he's so so funny. Do you know Josh? I I love Josh. He's so talented. He's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Actually, I was just bragging about him recently. He's an incredible poet, which people don't know. And it's like. I know he has good poetry cadence from some of the posts he's had. He's incredible. And at first, he first was like, "Oh yeah, I do poetry," and I was like, "Eh, "Cool. That's that's." And then he sent me one, and I was like, "Oh my god, this is really." Amazing. This episode probably comes out around when the new Mortal Kombat comes out, by the way. So check that oh out. He God. plays Kano. Check out Josh Lawson, yeah. please. Who you're going to see him at, in a, a Mortal Kombat movie, but he's an unbelievable comedian. He is. Yes. Um, so, yeah, I did House of Lies. I did an episode, just a co-star on that, her assistant. And then I, she just had Lincoln. And I was like, I also babysit. If you ever need a babysitter and then she called me and were you so looking for cash or looking to get in a little bit cash cash because i did not um i had i i worked at soul cycle at the time i worked the front desk at soul cycle it was and i babysat shout out to soul cycle we'll put their instagram handle up here oh that's nice we um, do that on the pod <laughs> your pod is so it's so um what's the word advanced 
Oh, you know, here's what I was thinking. Say something nice. Say something nice. <laughs> I, it's it, such a fucking energy drain. <laughs> It's like, okay, I get it. I get it. But like, you know, are we going to get Your back? pod <laughs> is too much for me. It's exhausting. No. <laughs> While you're outside with a little fan that I say, <laughs> don't let it. I know it's hot, but turn it on low. We can hear it. No, no, no. Um, it's advanced. I'm impressed by it. Incredibly impressed by it. Um, anyway, so uh, before I was the assistant's manager, which actually, or manager to the assistant, I... Um, was doing all that and then I started you know doing these writing things and then I just kind of started asserting my opinion on everything I was kind of like I think you should do this I think you should say no to this I was on all the emails you know and why were you looking for something to get credit for did you have opinions where you cared I cared I was like this is I mean I, I care about her and I just have a um but like for you to say that it's uh uh what why when I've why said you I care or do you make a better decision than her? Oh no, I, I don't. I don't think I make a better decision than her. But I do think she makes bad decisions. Yeah, <laughs> no, I'm just yeah, kidding. yeah, yeah. No, she's just overwhelmed. She has so much going on, and at that time, she didn't have anyone but me. And I felt like, oh, I can, I can help take some stuff off her plate. I also am just not good at not doing stuff. If I'm just sitting around, I'm bored. I'm waiting for an audition or you know i'm playing with the baby but i could be doing more and i like being busy my girlfriend betty shout out to betty will hi betty uh she uh is the same where i, I it's like i get a little anxious when there's stuff to do uh, -huh. uh if she doesn't have something to do she needs she helps me so much with the podcast now yeah um but she needs something to, she it it, it energizes not drains and exactly. you're you do i mean you're telling me that but that's the impression i got from you like yeah. you're just doing stuff yeah, and I think part of it, maybe subconsciously, is a um, a safety net I'm trying to build, where it's like all my eggs aren't in one basket, and across the board, emotionally, work wise, like I I hate. I mean, I love acting so much, but I I hate the business of waiting for someone to send you an audition um what a luxury the podcast is man it it is uh, yeah a weekly exactly making some cake. May, ex and it's just freed me of uh -huh. so much um anxiety about my life and career and of course then it makes you better of course you start booking stuff as soon as you have no time to which anything. I know that you're doing Curb, and well, we'll get to later. But keep this. But congratulations! I did one of Curb, oh, you already filmed it? Yes, it was really fun. So crazy. Uh, yeah. Shout but out to Curb, by the way. We'll put their Instagram <laughs> handle up here. <laughs> I can't wait to watch this. This is a um, like a movie. You make movies. Yeah. Well, I apologize in advance that there is, and it's not that big of a deal. Yeah. It will be when I'm editing it, but it's not. There's a little bit of a reflection on you here, and that I couldn't figure out with this new setup. Uh, is it because of I'm gonna look again. the fan? No, I, I think it's this sign, but it's never been the case before. Oh. I, I don't know what it is. Well, it's totally up to you. I'm happy to sit here while you try to figure it out. Is there a streak? Oh, is it here? Can I tell you something that really bothers me about this stuff? Yeah. I work so hard on the podcast and I want everything to look good, but sometimes you just have streaks. Sometimes you so do. So I make sure that I use Windex. What's great about Windex is it's 100% ocean-bound plastic, so you know that it goes right into the ocean when you're done with it. Wow. It's on this side. Okay. Oh! Did that hit you? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Clean my windows. <laughs> okay, let's check it out. Do you think it's because I'm so short? We could put something under oh, my butt. This is so much work you put into all of this. I, I'm, I mean, this is so disrespectful. Thank you. It's not. It really is not. And now you got a clean window. No. No? Maybe I'll sit up on my knees a little bit. Sorry, Ted. We love the sign, but... Sorry, Ted. That was it. <gasps> you did it. Commitment. Okay. All right. Going. Welcome back to another episode of Take Your Shoes Off. This is part two, non-reflective. Um, it's been 
probably 45 minutes, so the lighting is different <laughs> here. So just so people know, if I edit this, we, uh, I changed the living room for a little reflection that maybe none of you noticed. Most likely didn't, but we <sighs> needed it to happen. You yeah. need perfection. Well, when you say it's like you're making a movie and it's like, well, this isn't getting into any festivals if I, if, if I don't have a good DP exactly. on here. Exactly, exactly. Um, uh, speaking of good DPs, uh, shout out to Bryce, who put his Instagram handle up here, great director of photography. Met him because uh, he did the show Flaked uh, with my oh. buddy David Sullivan. Okay. And th I was having some reflective issues mm. and bigger ones than this. And he came in and it was his idea to light me a little here so I could do less there. So it's not off. Oh, and it was fun me. having him in here and we like anyway wow you um you do a fair amount of directing huh you directed your web series right um yeah that's what i, I that's, I, that's your main well i mean my main is acting of course um because that's the opportunities i've had and i always want to act but i really want to direct nice i've been shadowing um on my show uh, any project i do i go in days i'm not working and they let me shadow and that's awesome yeah i i very much want to do it, but I need a DP. This stuff's exhausting. Well, minimally, you need a window cleaner. And if it my wasn't career, the oh, yeah, you're right. I would never ask you to be a window cleaner. Well, if my career goes south, I wouldn't mind putting myself in uh, a job application. Would for you that. rather Dax refer to you as a babysitter or a window <laughs> cleaner? <laughs> a window cleaner. Yeah, I guess because that sounds like it, uh, like an analogy. Like she just helps me see things clearly. That's and right. Um, That's right. She does all the, the hard work. and She smooths out uh -huh. all the imperfections. Yeah. Uh, so where were we uh, about two hours ago? We were talking about um, my it was just after control you, issues, probably. Yeah, I remember you made a reference that I wasn't sure if it was, and I didn't want to interrupt, but here we are. Were you doing an office reference when you said assistant to the manager <laughs> to the assistant? I wasn't. I actually thought you said that, and so I was trying to correct. Control. That's right. Uh, so let me take it. I know where I want to go okay, with this. Okay, take it. Uh, and thank you. You're in charge. Thank here. you for everything you've been doing <laughs> with me today, and I'm sorry. Don't apologize. Um, do. I wonder if, by the way, this isn't where I was going, but yeah, if if you, you really get me a bomba spot, uh, yeah, yeah. we do have to cut to commercial. So okay, this is a great opportunity for them, but the audience will find out. Did you come through in two weeks? By what we see here. Oh my god. We'll be right back. So I had therapy this week. I had it on Wednesday. I have it every Wednesday, except next week I have something on Wednesday and I got really panicked that I wasn't going to be able to fit into the schedule because I, I, it's lifeblood for me talking to a third party person who can weigh in on all my issues because she's the only one who's not super connected to, you know, if, like, if I'm talking about a work issue, who am I going to talk to about that? Everyone's connected to that. It needs to be a third party and everyone has that. And... That's why I love BetterHelp, because they are making therapy accessible to everyone. I know multiple people who've tried it, and they love it. They love it. And it's like, why would you not try? It's not going to hurt. It's only going to help. I'm not going to make this an ad for my personal experiences, but I can say that going through therapy has made this easier for me and has given me... Uh, uh, something to talk about, maybe even to bore people with on the podcast. <laughs> but this podcast is very therapy intensive, and yeah. I couldn't offer all of these amazing analogies, insights, and finding a third thing to a list if it weren't for therapy. Good gracious. And if we didn't have analogy, your analogies in our life, what would we do? Basketball. You did it. That was great. I want you to be proud of yourself for that. Thank you. And I want you to start living a happier life today. As a listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting betterhelp.com slash Tyso. Join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Tyso for 10% off your first month. And we're back. So, uh, man, these socks are amazing, or I just got the best night's sleep of my life, or, uh, you know, I, I love that I learned about VPNs. I mean, what an interesting wine that was, or whatever the thing might be. Sure, sure, sure. So you... I want to know what happens when Dax has an idea to do a podcast, or you both do. I don't know. I do remember I talked to Dax. I was recording podcasts for maybe six years now. Wow. I never put them out. Uh, I recorded all these different first episodes with different guests and different things, and I was never happy enough with it, and it was a little... I didn't know how to upload it to iTunes. Sure. So just, big hurdle. <laughs> yeah, well, that I, I, I did one Google search, and I couldn't figure it out, and that barrier... 
I put the podcasting away okay. for like two years. So I, I did podcasting for like two and a half years, <laughs> never put it up. And then uh, I was talking to Dax. We were both about to set it up around the same time. Yeah. Uh, and I remember I went to the new place, the the attic, and I saw everything. And I remember he told me that he wants to do them. There'll probably be a couple hours. And I've been thinking, isn't that too long? And, you know, meanwhile, yeah. I'm spending 45 minutes cleaning a <laughs> fucking window. Uh, but where does it come from? Where, who, when he, he says he wants to do this podcast, I'm assuming he, he came to you with it. You're right. Yeah. So he um, had done a couple that he loved that were long form, which is why he refused to budge on it being a couple hours long. Um, he did those and he just got a lot of joy out of them. I think he really liked the idea of being able to talk long form and not have to do sound bites. And um, so he was talking about it and he was like, I kind of think I want to do one. And I was like, I can help. I can help with that. Let's do it. So then I met with some people who I knew in the podcast space to try to like shadow see what I could do. And then we also brought on Rob and then we kind of just started and the first few are it's crazy if you go back and listen like they're nothing like our current I've listened ones. to I, I uh I've listened to a lot of them I've listened to the first few they're they're much different than they are now what's different well we didn't edit the show at the time so it's much more uh bad um is the <laughs> editing more for pacing or for removing stuff that you guys don't want both but I would say I would say 70% pacing, 30% removal. I mean, the th it's imperative that we are able to take stuff out because we offer that to the guests. And, and does I the think guest tell you after? Uh-huh. Do you tell the guests before that you could tell us? Yes. I do that with some guests if I, have, if I anticipate us getting into a... Because I, I don't want somebody to feel like they can't tell me and then they're hot during it. Exactly. So I do try to search for that. Exactly. I think it just makes people come in with s their guard down, yeah. especially our show gets so vulnerable and we want it to and we want them to feel like, oh, they can say it and then decide after. Because right. most of the time, if you decide after, you're like, it's fine. But the anticipation of it is what gets people all nervous. I also, I, I know that it's not a big deal for people who are comfortable and aware of their boundaries. Because there are yeah. people that are like, this isn't something I want to talk about. Yeah. Fantastic. But if you don't give them that opportunity. Yeah. Um, which is something I learned late in life. You have to cue people that they could feel safe with boundaries. Yeah. But also just know what you want. Yeah. Um, but yeah. It's hard though. I think it's hard for people to know. Well, especially, in, I mean, what we're hoping is on our show, we start, we talk about things that they're not used to talking about on promote for promotion so we never want to catch them off guard and think like what is this like well, i thought we were talking about handmaid's tale uh but yeah so we like so yes priming them with like you can say whatever you want and then we'll cut it don't worry it's without giving a name could you give an example of something or things that you would take out like a specific something? Well, it's uh, uh, ironically, the most vulnerable, the most intimate things are not the things people want taken out. They want like the random, oh, I said this about... Could be a cancel type of thing? No. In fact, no. Like random things that I'm always like, that you care about that? Or that makes no, no one's going to care. Or right. I'm trying to think of something specific. I mean, obviously, like one time we said the kind of area of town the person lived right. they wanted that out um one time we had someone on lovely lovely human beautiful interview totally i would say on the vulnerable scale from zero to ten it was a four like not all that i know you're talking about open and we we were we couldn't oh <laughs> how the fuck would I know <laughs> Julie thought, Louise Dreyfus right I thought maybe you heard no you won't be able to guess it because we didn't air it they asked us not to oh, the air whole it yeah they wanted us to re-record and we were very perplexed because there was nothing there that felt like did you re you didn't re-record and then we and then we were not able to re-record so. Sadly, that's a lost lost episode. That that happened on my podcast. Uh, it's happened a few times. Really? Um, uh, yes. And one of the more recent ones, uh, 
the whole thing was I understood why they said it uh, and I also am aware that I have blind spots mm. but I could confidently tell you this is on this person I kept saying well yeah. let's then let's then let's we could change or we could and it was and there were some really good moments uh, but I'm totally fine not posting this episode. That's but they asked. They said, can we not do it and do it again? Um, and I said, yes, I won't post it. But I didn't agree to doing it again. Exactly. That's sort of That was sort of our stance. I mean, again, yeah, if we had like made a whole bunch of blunders, and I don't even know what that could be in this space. But if, if, if we did. Me on that. Oh, I don't even know what that would be in this space. But if we had done that, then maybe we would be more willing to, to take the time out to re-record. But the chances of the exact same thing happening were 99% because uh -huh. again we didn't we just I didn't understand yeah. and we're pretty understand you know I, I do think we're, we're very understanding but it just it didn't make sense and again this is a lovely lovely person but maybe they just were uncomfortable people have privacy lots of privacy issues and I think Dax and I are so immune to that at this point that maybe we're just like everything's fine you should be able to talk about anything and maybe that's not fair are you immune to it or are you, have you accepted it does that maybe desensitized at this point um i think yeah it, no, but no more than just accepted it i've embraced it i uh i sometimes get uh, embarrassed um and it's uh, uh it's it's uh it's deferred embarrassment. The, mm. I, I, I have an analogy for this. I said it to my girlfriend. I don't remember if I said it on the podcast. But like when you put your hand on a stove, it, you know to take it off right away. And pain is good because it tells the body. Yeah. But if you don't feel it. So I have my hand on the stove the whole podcast. You know, and it's like, oh, great. I make these choices and I do these weird things or these things that like are whatever could be the, the positive ends of this uh, side of it. And then the person leaves and either right away I realize or when I'm editing. And I see a face that I don't understand. And then it's like, and I just, and it affects me so much. Really? It affects me so much that, uh, I mean, days, uh, days of, um, of embarrassment. And, wow. and uh, I can't post this. I don't want to post this. Um, then it becomes more like, I, I, why am I doing a podcast? Mm. I'm, I'm, why am I alive? No, 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 you don't go that far. I, no, okay. I, I, I'm, I'm cool being here, but why? <laughs> why am I doing this? Why am I? Why uh, am I shitting in my pants? Which yeah. happens, and then saying, "Hey guys, check this out," and it's right. not like, "Oh, poor Rick, he was a guest on a podcast that didn't go well." I'm saying, "Watch this. This is I'm editing this. I'm making the choice yeah. to contextualize it the way I am," and and it happens, and then sometimes when it happens, I'll spiral, and then the next few, the, what but, I'm. Do you think that something like good always comes of it though? Like, do you think that's part of your process for lack of a better word? I don't know. I, I think when I said the accepted part, that's what I'm getting to. I've accepted that bigger than the podcast, I am going to miss a lot and it's operational cost. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm just like, I recently had one where I was so embarrassed, but and I was embarrassed, but I was the logically I was able to say you've been here before. You'll yeah. be you'll be fine on Friday. Yeah. But it's still, it's still hard. I think part of it is your, as I said, and I will say it again, your podcast is extremely advanced. It requires so much creativity. Like you have a lot going on in your head when you're doing this. You're like, you know, two things, two probably like five things are happening, but you're thinking about the jokes that are going to come in, the animation, you're engaged. Like there's so much happening that I think you're probably hard on, harder on yourself because there's all these levels. You want a good conversation. You want it to be funny. You want this. Yeah. And then maybe after the fact, you're like, it's just a lot to come down off of. I think you need to, your podcast is amazing. And I think you, you need to um, uh, step I, back from I'm yourself. going to spend two more minutes with you on this topic and then yes. we're going to move forward. Okay. Um, just now, while you're talking about these things, I am thinking about how we're talking too much about my podcast. I want to talk with, with the guest. Also, yeah. the live editing, all these things are true. But the, the, the bigger thing that is bigger than the podcast and something I've been working on myself is, is I have very great creative specific instincts that I'm proud yes. of and I love about myself. But, the, you know, 
I don't owe them to every situation. And at what point is a goblin shitting in your pocket <laughs> going to add more value than taking away your momentum? And I won't yeah. know until I'm editing because my, my hand's on the stove and I just can't feel it. Yeah. So then there are times where it's like, okay, Rick, you know you can't feel it. So check in with others. Check your other senses. Do you smell burning flesh? You know? And now I'm not yeah. present. I'm checking if the cameras are on. I'm thinking about, is this glare really better? Is he going to be upset that I covered the signs? And boy, are my arms tired. Right. You know? So it's like... Oh, boy. So, but, but that's the negative. The positive is, hey, I got, you know, I got... I have a specific thing, you know, yes. I, nobody's doing it like this. And no one can do it. I think that's the uh, double-edged sword, right? Like, in order for you to get that result, you might need to have some of this um, n neuroses. I don't want to call it that, but Why? I can't. I don't, you, it's better it than calling so it negative. Jew factors. <laughs> well, I would never. <laughs> Bleep when she said neuroses, so it seems like she said Jew factors. And show me, say this. How? What? How, dare How could you, you? say that? <laughs> um, yeah, joking. neuroses. Like I, I, I generally am not a person that feels like, oh, you have to like to be a creative person. You have to be to be a what person? A creative. To be a creative person, you have to be quote tortured no. or have all this you know internal struggle. I don't believe that, but sometimes I see it in other people, and and I think. Oh, for them, I really think it's true. Yeah. Alec Baldwin uh, uh, interviewed Seinfeld uh, about this, this idea where comedy is, comes from a certain defensive place. Mm -hmm. uh, and usually it's pain or trauma, et cetera. Yeah. And Seinfeld goes, no, like my parents were great. Uh, yeah. Alex says, yeah, you he said, uh, your life is kind of like a boulevard of unbroken uh, green lights. <laughs> and it's a great conversation about that. Interesting. Um, anyway. But anyway, maybe you're you're in that category and you can just own it and know you're going to get to a place where uh, you're you're happy with your result. I've been I said two minutes, but I guess it's going to be four. I've been I, I love myself good. and I, I love okay, what I, I love have that. to offer and I love my comedy and I've gotten good enough to know s more uh, a way to be. But um, it's the podcast where I am showing i am not just people seeing my flaws but i'm promoting them yeah where it gets to a point where it's like i could and this is where betty comes in so much i could use somebody to i'm on the show and and uh i'm very specific with my hair because you touch something and it frizzes and just i'd rather it it's a character i don't need it to look perfect i yeah. just want it to not be frizzy for whatever reason i don't like the frizz of course Hair. No one likes the frizz. So hair is always very like, may I and whatever, do whatever. And then they want to show me and you can't let me see it. Yeah. I just, I don't want to look at it. Um, I, you know, you look in the mirror, you find something where you look the best you can and then you don't look ever again. And now <laughs> here's what you look like for the rest of your life until you look at, you know what I mean? <laughs> yes. So that's what the, if I do this and don't tell me. Yeah. But I have so, like you, there's so many controlling things with the editing. I have to look at it. Yeah. Um, and I would love to transition into away from me with this. Thank you so much. Uh, and connecting with your control issues mm -hmm. with um, n with the product. Yeah. Why why can't you have somebody else do it? Will they not do it as well? And, you know, I I'll leave it more open-ended, but I have more specific questions. It's so arrogant for me to say they won't do it as well. And I, I don't I don't even think that's really doing it justice. It's not that I don't think they'll do it as well. It's that I don't think they will ever be able to totally understand what I'm doing. What are you doing? Let's see if I can articulate it without canceling us. Um, <laughs> Well, we're stealing from the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there's some plagiarism I'm handling very delicately. No, what I'm doing is making sure everyone is at their best. Mm -hmm. So even if they say two words that make them seem a little unlikable, I cut it. Now, do you, do you look for another set of ears or do you make the decision on your own? I make the decision. So I I have an editor come in before me to take out ums and pauses and all you know, ums. That. So yeah, so it's funny. This is part of the thing. So 
I considered that. I made a conscious choice not to. Not to take them out. I remember learning uh, Audacity, which I don't use to edit, but back in college, uh, and we were learning how to take out all ums. Yeah. And I so, that always and I've clocked ums in everything ever since. Yes. But I made a p- point not to. But anyway. To keep it natural, which I totally get. Kind of. What? Why would you? Why do you? I take keep out ums when it messes up the momentum or it makes the guest look stupid. Yeah. Yeah. Or you know, blank, bad. Yeah. Um. But when they when they happen, like uh, when I said it, or if they happen when you say it, yeah, it, it's 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 case by case. But I I consciously I will take out an um and watch it, and then put it back. Yeah. So exactly. Well, then honestly, you could probably do it if you don't want to do your podcast anymore, or act, or direct, or do anything. You I know could have what my you're, job. I know what you're saying that you do that you don't know if other people could do. I know what it is. You have intention with your decisions, exactly, as opposed to just following a set of five rules that are uh, robotic. Wow, I've never thought of it in those in those words and I think that's exactly right like because I've tried I tried to say like okay so take yes. out all of this and do this and like make a list and it, it never works it never works the way you I have to want find it the to right, th- it does yeah I mean same with this I yeah. now uh, shout out to Evan and Perry uh, I now work with a few people that help me and I'm still whatever yeah. they do a lot and I have deferred a lot to them and it's been so much work training. And by training, I don't mean I do it better than you, but I do it the way I want it done. Yeah, exactly. But it's I, what I have found, and it's very tough, is you can't give a set of rules. You have to you have to just do a whole bunch. You have to do 50 episodes with them. Yeah. And show every... So they calibrate why and when. And sometimes when they miss stuff, what I used to do is I just fix it because it's small. Yeah. And now I'll film every one of them and be like, here's what it is oh, and here's wow. what. It's exhausting. But it's, it's equity yeah. to where now I feel comfortable. Like when I said mark this, and I don't know if it'll even be in, but they'll take I'll look over it, yeah. but they'll do it the way I want it. Yeah. But yeah. It's helped so much. I know. Your job I, is probably so overwhelming, and you do so many podcasts. Yeah, and we're doing more and more, which is the best. I love it. But but it, it is. I mean, at some point, when we had, uh, not to name drop, but when we had Bill Gates on. Um, I mean, every one of your guests <laughs> is a name drop. <laughs> it's ridiculous. But when we had him on, I, I asked him about delegating because, you know, he may, Microsoft is his brainchild. And I, and I was like, how did you do that? And he's such a perfectionist. that, And he was like, well, you just have to come to terms with the fact that it's not it's not going to be exactly right. like you want. It's not, they're not you, but it's worth the trade off of being able to maximize your business. And I was like, oh, yeah. That's I mean, the practice I'm like forcing myself to understand. Yeah. It's so hard to not, to get so focused on the like the tiny detail and not think about the big picture. I'm trying so hard, but it. Because the tiny detail matters. To Especially me, if it sets a precedent to how the other ums are going to go. Exactly. And and I really think I established a style. Like our, our podcast has a sound and a style. And I think a lot of that has to do with the editing. And, and Absolutely. As, as far as what you're saying about ums, I totally get it. And you're right. There are times where I'll keep a pause long or I'll keep it short you know I'll figure that out and it's it's case by case but the reason I originally was taking all those things out is because our show's so long that I was like oh we can't get slowed down here people will turn it off yeah. if it starts to slow down we got to keep the momentum up but I I but yeah it's just case by case and I gotta I gotta work on it those are my instincts when live editing like I'm watching this through my computer screen so a lot of times I'm snapping and I'm adding animation and bits because for right or wrong, I, I mean, the audience may agree or disagree, but whatever I think is what the world is, at least in this moment, because exactly. that's what I'm here. So that's the most sustainable uh, way of policing, pacing, vomiting on myself. <laughs> but so I'll sometimes like, can I shorten this in editing or should I try and do it live with a thing and risk? Yeah. And that's anyway, that's a lot. That's part of the other stuff that I'm trying to develop the instincts for. Because yeah. pacing is like, Every, there are so many podcasts with people that I, I'm a fan of. Yeah. And it's a different sport. 
a hundred percent. And I think this has been bad for me, actually, because I have. What is this? I, what I'm is listening to other people because I've been really. You know, I'm so controlling and I'm trying to work on it and I'm trying to delegate and I'm trying to not worry about the is the pause two seconds or is the pause 1.5 seconds. And then I listen to somebody else's podcast. And they don't who, give a shit. And they, they don't. And I notice it. I'm like, Same. oh, I don't like the sound of this as much. And I love the person and I love what they're saying. So it has nothing to do yeah. with the content. It's literally the sound. And then the I get back no, in my head. That's the content. Yeah. Their execution is, but this isn't a conversation in a living room. This is a show. Yeah, exactly. And we're asking people to give us two hours. Exactly. And we also want something out of it. We mm -hmm. want more advertising, more viewers. We want people are going to only listen to so many podcasts. So in a way, it's kind of a dark way of looking at it. But in a way, podcasts are competition. Yeah. And uh, yeah, like any show. I mean, it's the same yeah. thing. Yeah. So you want it to be the best it can be and have its own signature. And also, but yours has it already. Thank you. I, I think it does, but I do think a lot of that has to do... I mean, it has to do with so many things. But in my head, I feel that if one of those things were to go away or if one of those things were to fall off, the whole thing is going to so, erupt. Have you ever been uh, uh, in a relationship with somebody, intimate or otherwise, just somebody you know, and they... You know, I mean, you've heard this example. People become better looking or worse looking or funny yeah. or... But whatever it might be. You already have this. You're already this person is already this thing. It's yeah. gonna it's gonna take a lot to think that they're prettier, uglier, funnier, or stupider, smarter, whatever. That's you know true. what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, a fair analogy would be I'm watching the West. I just finished the West Wing for the first oh, time. You ever watch wow. it? Oh, I love it. Love it. Yes. Aaron Sorkin leaves after season four. Mm -hmm. Season five, relatively speaking, is bad. It's yeah. the worst of the season. Yes. Aaron left. Yep. No, new showrunner comes in. They need to figure it out. Six and seven are fantastic. Yeah. And it still feels like the West Wing. Yeah. Aaron left. Once it's set, people, like, I tell anybody that's going to help me with stuff, even with promos, um, you have to watch at least five episodes. And yeah. I'll tell them a, f a couple that are important because this is what your inspiration is. Exactly. You know? Yeah, and I think I do suffer, you know, in, in I'm not in the program, but obviously uh, my Addiction. best friend is. Yeah, so I, I hear a lot of these quotes, and I do think I can fall into the terminal uniqueness uh, trap where it's like, I'm the only one who can do this, and that's it, and I guess that's it. And then and then I find little places of validation where, mm -hmm. where it's proof that it's true. And so I'm like, see, I, I just, it can only be me. And it's just not true. Of course, of course. It, 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 I mean, part of it is, I mean, you offer a value. It's like what you were saying, Bill was saying, is, uh, I'm going to give another analogy. I'm big into crypto. I love analogies. I'm like, I'm the analogy guy. <laughs> I'm like the Michael Jordan of basketball. <gasps> wow. So I... <laughs> Have, uh, I'm in crypto, uh, and I have certain coins that I, I, I've tried day trading. I still do. I don't think it's my best. If I just left the stuff, I would have been better off. Mm -hmm. But here's something where I end up making 40% uh, on. Yeah. Great. That's good. Yeah. That's you taking, in this analogy, that's taking out the ums. It is better because right. I've done this. However, so I'm glad I didn't sell it. But if I sold it before it went up 40%, where could I have put that money? If I put that money here, exactly. this would have been less, but this could have been 2x. Yes. So it's it's the energy, not just the time, but the energy, the motivation, the inspiration of... Exactly. I have deferred my live animation out to Tom. I don't even think about it. I can now have lights fall on your head and get you know interrupt you too much <laughs> because of it. Yeah, look what it gave you. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, yeah. But you... I want to know what your jobs are specifically because I don't know if you remember and I don't, I'm sorry if we met before that. I don't know. But the first time I remember meeting you mm -hmm. uh, was at a commercial audition. Uh, I remember that. Yeah. And uh, I was listening to your podcast. I mean, I list the armchair expert uh, and Eric Griffin will put his Instagram handle up here. Those are the podcasts I listened to. I just made a choice and that's what it is now. So I was listening to you on the way over. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember I said to you, uh, hi, how you doing? I didn't know if we had met before. Do you remember this moment? Uh, yes. And I, in that moment, I didn't know if we had met before. Yeah. And I, over I overcompensated. I compensated. Uh -huh. um, and I told you that the fact checks were my favorite part. And I love the fact checks. Thank but they're you. Not my, I, don't, they're not my, I mean, they're, it's all the same thing. Sure, I love sure. Them. And I remember walking up and being like, I don't know why. I wanted her to know. And I remember <laughs> that. And it was like, 
Uh, and truthfully, I love the fact checks. Maybe on some episodes it is my favorite part. Yeah. But I definitely said it because I was... I said nice to meet you, and I wasn't sure oh, instead of good to see so you. Oh, this so interesting. Uh, and this wasn't something that's been sitting on me. I just recalled it at the yeah, moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I do remember, I, 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 I do not want to be, I want to be honest, you yeah. know? Yeah. And I said that, and it was a little out of my comfort zone of like, why did I just feel the need to and do it, that? Yeah, and it was because I, if we had met before. That's really funny. I mean, I'm sure... I, I don't. I actually don't know that we had really met before. I know we had crossed paths. I think maybe yeah, you were leaving the attic one day and I was coming in or something. Um, but no, we we had not really met met until then. That is so funny though that you, the things that we think about when we leave an interaction that the other person is a hundred percent not of course, thinking about. A hot I mean, stove. exactly. You, uh, is it supposed to hurt? <laughs> yes, I mean. Th- the idea that like I would have continued to think like oh what well, we met and he he said nice to meet you and I mean I just no, none of that was registering with me it was just like oh yeah that's so nice that's and, like, a big that's, it. that's a big one for me though the me I, I have really I have trouble remembering. Un- remembering people's faces yeah um so that's a big one I got called out a few times when I was a kid and oh. it made it it was um this type of person but really i just don't recognize faces very well yeah uh, anyway um but i bring that up because i want to know what the process and the workflow and what you do to fact check and mm. do you remember everything do you mm. go back and listen do you is it while you're editing or is it edited you listen to the final version yeah so i while i'm in there editing is when i pull facts and then i uh then we record the fact check later. so when you're sitting there mm-hmm. I'm editing. if you were to do one for this okay like you know, you, it doesn't have to be the best example. Is there yeah. something that like, oh, here is a fact that I will either, did, and do I search it or do I know the answer? I would write down, I would write down Windex, um, percentage of, um, percentage of efficacy in Windex. Like, even though that was not a fact that we talked right. about, it's something that maybe would be a fun thing for us to talk about. I did about. say 90, I said 100% that it, it was the Okay, the see, yeah, so yes, that. 100%. So I definitely would look it up and look at like, what's the real percentage of that? And even if it's just something fun that would, you know, something for us to talk about, like uh, poop in a pocket or something, that I might write that down. And then, and then I just make a list and then I check them. And then uh, we record. And sometimes if our fact check is like an hour, which sometimes it gets to because we end up just chatting and chatting and chatting, I'll leave some of those extra ones out. And I'll just I'll just say that, you know, it's kind of just loosey goose a little bit. I mean, it started out much more like this is a fact then this is a fact then this is a fact. And now it's so much more of just like a debrief, our own time to chat and be silly and then sprinkled in with facts. So it's a little bit less strict what were the origins of wanting to do that that was that was him that was all him he said Shout i think we Dax should put your instagram in yeah let's bit. yeah let's give him a he needs a boost he um, does <laughs> it's weird how uh, how a transparent how cool i think he is and how much i know he needs people to know that and it doesn't take away i know we're all just little babies babies who need approval Dax isn't he's a baby no, I know. he's a little boy um we need he, approval from Eight people. Yeah. You know, there's certain people. The right people. people. Uh-huh. I know. You could all hate me. Who gives a shit? Dex thinks I could drive cool or, you know, whatever exactly. the thing would be. Oh, it's so, uh, yeah. It's a, it's a beating being a person. But anyway. Not if you have that eight people. And I'm serious. If you have, if you, you have champions. Yeah. I think that there are people that are champions in your life. And yeah. if you recognize that and you allow it, then you're okay. And that's why it's so important. I mean, my parents are so supportive of me. Yeah. And is it enough? Maybe. Yeah. But that plus a couple of others, obviously in a way to teach you to be one for yourself. Yeah. But then, yeah. Well, okay. I like the way you put that though. It's it it's eight people who are giving you true really filling voids in a real way not the eight people that you think are better than you right you have to you have to pick the right champions yes and they have to pick you yeah because i think if you're just picking like you know if i'm picking like amy poehler and who you know i want her approval so bad but like if i'm picking amy 
Poehler and whatever Hillary Clinton and I'm getting it from these people it's that, so crazy by the way you're saying these names and I totally understand but these are also people that come and you have conversations with well that's it's what so that's why I'm picking muddy. them because because a very small part of me could could convince myself that I could get it from them you know and I it but if I picked people like that even if they gave it to me, it's not enough because I'm just picking them because they're quote above me. That's yeah. not that's you not meaningful. Yeah, exactly. I think you gotta pick each other. That's a nice way of putting it. Um, but I get that. I mean, it is a it is a big, a big uh, you know injection of, of whatever it is. I never know if connection is dopamine or oxytocin. But who needs to get into that? Just that that drug of like when I called Blake Griffin on a podcast. And because uh, we were talking about dunking and he's not going to answer and he answered. <gasps> he and, did. and then for the next 20 minutes, I'm just like, <laughs> I mean, that was fucking nuts. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You're on a high. Yeah. And then it, he just answered his phone. Yeah. You know? Exactly. And yeah. The high is what we're chasing, but it's not the sustainable thing. I mean, obviously across the board with all highs, it's, it's that it you want. Unless it's unless it's somebody in your life, unless it's constantly love and, 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 and respect and approval from somebody who you want it from. But that's not a high. I think that's the thing. That is that is fulfilling on a level that's not extreme. And so that's why I think some people disregard it because right. they feel like right. it's mundane or it's consi- some people disregard the consistency of it. Yeah. And the safety and security of it to chase this like ephemeral right. high. Um, I mean, obviously, this is like such a thing in relationships, and for me especially, like I always wanted the person I couldn't have. Um, have you ever had a person that you couldn't have, and then did you still have that feeling, or does that go away? So it always goes away um, before I even before we even get there, because if I start feeling reciprocation, I'm getting a little better about this, but if I start feeling reciprocation i think like oh wait this is not the person i thought they were so you're attracted to the impossibility exactly and then and then i I almost blame them for liking me like oh you're not all that great because you wouldn't like me yeah i mean you you were were worried about using the word neurotic with me i mean are you projecting because (laughs) i I think larry david has a joke or no it's woody allen may he rest in peace uh (laughs) That he said, um, <laughs> he's like, uh, well, I think it was in Annie Hall or an interview. I don't remember, but it was like, I, I couldn't like somebody that liked me. Yeah. Like what, like you have horrible taste or something like that. Yeah. There's a, there's a, um, Groucho Marx quote. That's like, I would never want to be a part of a club that would have me. Yeah. And, and so when we did Monica and Jess love boys, we get into all of that. And like that quote comes Are you going to do more of those by the way? We are. We're going to do a second season. It's going to be a little different than our first one. It's a little bit more action oriented um you guys are gonna be on like pelotons during it yeah <laughs> yeah it's, a, it's an ad for peloton um no it's we're gonna maybe edit this out maybe i'll let you know uh, can you edit it out if i we're live baby after? yeah we <laughs> could edit it out or uh sometimes i i bleep with music and okay. animation or something you know what maybe i'll just say it because it, um what, what are you saying because you're editing out what that you're announcing something that you were saving to announce not even announcing it, but I mean, we're still working out the details of what it's going to be, but I'm going to tell you what I think it's going to be. Um, and this is going to circle back to where we initially started, where I say I like to box myself in. I'm going to box my... People often ask what a Peloton is. It's a cycling term. The Circling back to the very beginning, where I said I like to box myself in, I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to box myself in by telling you and the listeners about season two so season two is going to be kind of like a bachelor we're going to hmm. put out applications oh i thought you're just gonna put out <laughs> well that, that you know there's gonna be fantasy suite dates don't worry um live studio audience laughter. and and uh we're gonna put out basically applications to date us for us to meet people and it's going to be like a real vulnerable actual dating show podcast version first episode will probably be like speed ra- speed dating or at least going through the applications with friends and then speed dating there'll be a meet the parents with Kristen and dax at some point so um it's a little more action oriented than the first season which was like learning about ourselves way more 
And this is like putting those things into action. I had an idea that I'm not worried about if it's crossing paths because I'm not going to do it anyway. But I need to prefacate with that so you know that, hey, I had this idea. Yeah. Um, and I'm curious if you're doing this. Are you because I, I wanted to do uh, when I was single, thought it would be cool uh, to have a podcast called First Dates. And the date is come on the podcast. The date mm -hmm. is the podcast. Mm -hmm. Are you going to have the guests on the podcast or are you just going to be talking about it? We're going to, I think as the show goes on, the the people will get more and more involved in the actual recording. They obviously have to be willing to. And, and this gets complicated, right? Like, Do you give the address or do you rent a studio? We would probably do not the attic for it. Right. Like, yeah, a different location. But also, I mean... Are they on it so that they can be on a podcast? Yes. Are they on, you know, this gets complicated they in are, that way. Every it, one of them. Exactly. Be so okay then, with it. then, yeah, we have to just embrace that. I mean, that, you called right? it The Bachelor. I mean, well, who's, who's on there looking for love? No, I'm I saying that was, your, that was your comparable. Yes, yes. So, yeah. I but know. also, aren't. I was just having this conversation uh, with my buddy. I hung up as you texted yeah. before, which is. I mean, I, I'm just feeling myself. This is a three-minute story, and is it no, worth it? But yes. let's do it. Uh, also, if we're coming back from the Peloton thing now, uh, what you missed was uh, <laughs> crazy, but we'll hear about it later. So there's somebody that, that texted him, happy birthday. Uh -huh. And he's like, why is this person texting me? I don't, I'm not want, I don't want to be friends with him. Oh. Um, he doesn't dislike him. He has no interest in him. Got it. This person is relatively successful, and the person who's texting him doesn't matter. But the point is... He's, my friend is projecting that he's just, he wants me to hire him at some point. Mm. I don't know that, but it feels that way. He messaged him. This is his fourth message in a row. Every year, he messages him for his birthday. And I wish this, I don't want to, I don't like to waste a wish. It would have been great if this thing was recorded because good for me, man. I, 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 I the, the analogies were just oh, fire. Oh, my God. And I don't remember analogies. what they were and I don't want to try. But the, the basics of it were two things. One, it's not like he keeps hitting them. It's once a year, man. Take yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. But also. What does it do to you? But he's like, but he doesn't, he knows what it's like. Like, can't you take the hint? Like, when are you supposed to tell somebody something? Mm. And is, where is it mean or is it nice to say, hey, and my thoughts were, if it costs, if, you, or if you're trying to set up a boundary and you're uncomfortable, then you have to do it. Yeah. If it's not, it costs nothing to just be nice. Surface nice yeah if that nice means not responding at all but not shutting down whatever that yeah. thing is to you but he was saying i i think i would feel different if he only messaged me now for the first time it, it wouldn't feel like oh he was after something and there's something that he didn't like about this person wants something from him and i was saying i know that it's gross when somebody wants something from you yeah isolated that truth but if you package it with just human nature and what things are it's not that big of a deal we all want something from somebody yes and the part that maybe we don't like is the secretiveness or the manipulation that isn't necessarily happening at all yeah but but that the point is that like these people are on the show because they want something yeah you're doing it on a pot you want yeah something. i want something too exactly and if you're looking for somebody in an organic situation that's not what it is but if you're looking for somebody in a fun circumstance where i can't believe this worked yeah you know you're both playing the same game you're right that's a great way of looking at it and that we are not you know we're not doing a there's a there's a ring at the end of this obviously it's it's way more normal it's way more like a a structured way of uh exposing ourselves to more yeah. people and having other people join along on that journey and yeah and, and you're right you i think we we kind of put ourselves in a moral high ground often of like this person wants something from me and i'm i'm up here and i don't want anything from anyone of course we do we all want something from people and what does it cost you and i think part of the the um allergy we have towards it is feeling like we're getting taken advantage of mm -hmm. But if you can't be taken, it if you know what's going on, then you will not be taken advantage of. Uh, earlier in this podcast, and uh, uh, when you were talking about asking Kristen to babysit, um, that when I said, "Is it about money or getting in?" Right. And there's, and I don't want to call you out to put you on the spot because I don't know. This is that's yeah. just a perfect example. There is a world in a similar situation where instead of Kristen, it's somebody else who's a big celebrity, and instead yeah. of you, it's somebody else. Yeah. 
Would I have done it? What if it wasn't a Kristen? Yeah. Would you? You know, like, I want to babysit. Yes, that's true. But there is also something attractive of it would be cool to get closer to this thing. For sure. I guess you're right. I mean, I would be, I would be lying if I said it could be anyone. But but I'm also, I it also was. I was babysitting so many families of, and of none course. of them were anyone. But there's a different feeling. There's a different feeling. But there was a different feeling for a lot of reasons. One was because I had known them in an, on an acquaintance level and I liked them on an acquaintance level and she had just had the baby and I don't, I, God, now I'm going to, of course, you know, re revise the history and say she wanted, she was looking for babysitters, but maybe I'm making that. That could definitely be made well, up. Well, the, the, the point, even the, the trying to figure this out is I think that we have this shame of wanting something. Yeah. Uh, and that's where the projection of grossed out when people want something. Uh, yeah. I dated a girl that was famous and there was uh, she was uh, invited to this film festival in Hawaii mm -hmm. and it was first class trip and blah 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 and I'm trying to f how do I find this concise she a similar conversation was happening with a friend of hers and somebody that wanted to meet her because that person was a fan of the person's dad and okay. it's like oh he only wants to date her because he likes the dad and he's a huge fan of the dad and I said he might be a huge fan of the dad and what a cool bonus for dating this girl that he right. gets that they're not mutually exclusive yeah i'm going on this trip with you to hawaii i am taking advantage of the fact that you're a celebrity and i'm glad that i get to tag a i mean that exists it's not why i'm wanting to with date you. you yeah but there, there's a world where the guy would feel like no i like your dad but it's not that big of a deal but the truth is i'm fucking crazy about your dad yeah that's separate <laughs> i mean I'm, what a cool thing and there might be some truth in i kind of went out with you at first because of that right i wouldn't have kept doing that right right but like I, we're I so embarrassed right. about but like i mean podcasting yeah. last point i want to make on this uh is podcasting is so superficial yeah i want to have people on that will draw numbers especially now that i have advertisers yeah and i have friends that say they want to come on and either i have to be very close with this person yeah and or think they're unbelievably funny yeah or they have to bring something to the podcast yeah if I if you didn't do armchair expert and I just met you, I wouldn't have asked you. Of course. If I got to know you, maybe I have I have people on that aren't famous that I have, but I know them from. They offered me something else. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? A rapport minimally. I'm going maybe. way too much. I'm having a great time. The coffee kick, and I'm talking too much. I'm I getting love insecure. this. Okay. Don't be insecure. Isn't this what? Isn't this the point? This this is this this is the stuff I'm saying. Am I burning myself right now? This is no. one of those. Oh, I feel the opposite. I feel like these are the moments you want in a show. Yeah, but you're opposite the only other person who talks more than me. You know, like <laughs> you're used to somebody who's like talks a lot. Oh, yeah. You're this is not even close to the, to, to what I deal but with. But I'm sorry. I, you know, I think you're the best. We love you. We love the way you drive. I so many things. His, <laughs> his haircut is like, why wasn't he doing that his whole life? Every, great. No, he can actually you know what's great. He can wear his hair long and short. Yeah. How many people can do that? I guess anybody who has that cut, <laughs> you could probably do it. You could yeah. do one of those things where you do one side. Oh my God, he, that's crazy that I'm you said into that. that look. He's dying for me to do that. He's been trying to get yeah. me to shave a side. You'd have for to get like a sleeve tattoo. Too. Yeah, I'm not, I, this isn't for me. My hair is like one of the only things that I, I like about my physical appearance. So I'm messing with it is a little bit scary for me. You are very confident in your insecurities. Oh, I know them very well. They're my they're my friends at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. So let's go back to to the podcast Kay. from three days ago when we were talking about yes. It. Fact checking. Yes. Uh, can we fact check this episode? Of course, I would love to. It'd be so fun. Good. Um, do you listen to it and come back? Do you listen to it and then just do an audio only? Because we can't really do it now. And we also, can't do it now. I don't want to box you into a corner. But also, here's a box. Feel free to step in. I would. I think I should come back. I'll send it to you. Okay. We'll figure it out. Okay. Okay. Or will you? You'll have to stick around and we'll find out. Mm -hmm. It's the fact check. Oh, oh, no, oh I wasn't was trying funny. to do a comedy thing. I really felt I had it in me. I liked that. Yeah, but you're kind of a, you're a born supporter. And we're back. So they 
I look at the facts and then we do it. It was Dax's idea from the beginning because armchair expert, you know, I think he really liked the idea of like, since he's sitting on this pedestal of, I know I'm a know-it-all, I know everything. Let's bring someone yeah. in to t- take me down a peg, which is uh, hilarious was and that when you, wonderful. Was that when, when you got in? Involved or were you already involved? I was already involved. I mean, again, like I was involved from like the day he said, I think I want to do it. I was like, we're doing it and I'm going to figure it out. Um, and then, but at that point we didn't have a structure. We didn't have anything. And, and he was like, I think you should co-host this with me. So he asked me to do that. Then the fact check came a little bit later in the process of, of us figuring out what it was. But the fact check was from the get go. I think it was on our first episode. Um, which was Kristen. Which was Kristen. But wasn't the first one you aired, if I'm not mistaken. Because he wasn't sure. Didn't wasn't no, it Ashley Kutcher? No. Oh God. I'll have to fact check this. I'm I'm pretty sure Kristen was our first, but I think we released three either within three days or three at the same time. And the first three were Kristen, Ashton, and I'm pretty sure Joy. My me- my memory. Which Uh-oh. is one hundred percent right. Accurate. Ninety nine percent. Okay. About as much as Windex will fix whatever the <laughs> thing was that we talked about. Uh, he recorded Kristen. Didn't know if he wanted to put it out. Yeah. Put out number one as Ash, Ash, Ashton. Ashton. And then decided to put it out. Okay. But we'll I'm find not, out. We're gonna find out. I'd stick to my guns that it you, was. I don't really know. That's that just my memory. The, well, your memory probably is better than mine as a listener because uh, in the behind the scenes, we're, who knows what's going on? But I think we put out a bunch at the same time. Three. That's what you. That, by the way, any advice to, uh, advice to people when you put out a podcast? Put out three right put away. Put out three so that they can Let get into it. People know what it is. That's right. Yeah. I did not do that, and I've been catching up ever since. Well, well, and to be fair, we put out three episodes of a show that that didn't end up being what it is. And I think it's changed. It changed once we had Chris Hardwick on, and he came on, and he said, you know, have your sheet of things you want to reference or talk about, but you don't have to look at it. I'm like, oh, my God, you have a sheet. Have you looked at it? Make sure you interrupt at least nine times. Okay, great. Check. Uh, and then just some questions. Uh, yeah, I have looked at it. But okay. also, um, I know what they are beforehand. Yeah. Uh, uh, Betty helps with questions. Oh, that's fun. And I have them on purpose now, not for structure, but for panic. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's what, what he has too. But at first, it was very structured. And I think it was very confining. It was like, I got, oh, no, I haven't asked this. And I oh, got the opposite to. end. He, at first, was e- Exactly. Exactly. And now, and then when Chris came on, he was like, you don't have to do that. Like, let the thing be whatever it is. Yeah. Especially since we started editing. It was like, who cares? This mm-hmm. can be all over the place. I can move this thing to the front if we want, whatever. So, um, anyway, that... That's that is that that is a fact check. What else about the fact check? Um, and and uh, when you when you're what are you? I mean, you're a co-host slash producer. Co-host, producer, co-creator. What's the what's the thing that you uh, what's the thing that you if you had to give up control? What's the thing that you don't want to do anymore? Because what I would love is to come to my living room, sit down, somebody set everything up, and oh. then be done. And then it, it ends up coming out exactly how I would have wanted it. Yeah. But that's not possible. I have to do stuff. Um, but what are the things that you would not want to do? I mean, I guess, again, in, in a perfect world, ideally, I would love to not edit the show. Uh, because that is the most tedious part of it. Um, and it does take up a lot of time and energy that, as you said, I think could go to the more creative elements of the producing side of it. Uh, but, but again, but then I'm, then it's this weird cycle where I, I want to give that up the most, but also it's the thing I would probably give up the last. Dax doesn't do it. He doesn't. And, but, and, and he'll say incredibly, and he will say to me when we have these conversations, like, I I'm the most controlling person ever and I found you and I trust you so you can do that too so he wants you to Alec to, to uh, give this up I think he does until we uh, delegate it out to someone and then the show is right uh, crumbles and then you keep training them and do it yeah. with that person I for know. ever for one year or you find someone else that's a good idea I mean I did uh, for the person who's helping now who I love and she's 
great. Like she, it, it, it's not her. It's me. Obviously, it's my controlling. And like I said, the sending the lists, they can only do so much. And I did sit down with her at the beginning for a little bit, but I, I think it just requires so much more time spent of a mind meld. Yeah. Before I can feel like I'm still ego. editing every episode, every episode with the other people that are doing it with me. You so are. I don't give it to them. Some episodes I do on my own. Some episodes they do most. Yeah. Usually it's us. Come on. Uh, I will start it with my notes. They'll do it doing my notes and then adding whatever the creatives they want. Then I'll take it back. I'll look over everything, add, change, remove, expand upon. And they see my notes so they know. And then after I'm done adding, changing, removing, expanding upon, I will show them not enough, by the way, because it's so it's like at this point, I just got to get this done. Yeah. But that's why it's taking so long. But I will say, hey, make sure we do this. There was an episode I did um, with my buddy Adam Ray and we're we're uh, high, very high. And we did. Oh, we're going to put 60 <laughs> seconds on the clock and name all the owls that we could think of. And we're doing it. And I <laughs> did my my clock and I did 60 seconds. I missed that part. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Sometimes I don't catch everything. Yeah. And then I watched it afterwards. It's like, he didn't put the 60 seconds up on the clock. Mm. Not that big of a deal. Yeah. But I told him. Just so we now know, anytime when we say that, it's taken it care of. It has to be, yeah. You know, and it's a, such a small thing, but every week, mind meld, mind meld. And yeah, you get closer and closer to that. And what it's gotten to now is instead of me putting 30 to 40 hours a week on each episode, I'm putting 10 to 15. Yeah. And that's, I'm still editing. Yeah. But so much less. Just gets less and less. Yeah. And, you know, I think I'll get there. I, I The close, I mean, I have definitely taken strides in this and I think it's out of necessity and it'll just become more and more and more of a necessity as we continue to grow. Like, I can't edit every single show we do. I just can't. How many do you do? You do two armchair experts a week. We do two armchair experts a week. We do an armchair and dangerous, uh, which is our conspiracy theory show. Oh, that's once a new a one. Month. Yep. And you have experts. That's our Thursdays expert. So conspiracy theory is just with our friend David Ferrier, who's a documentarian, and we do. And each episode is about a specific conspiracy theory. And he like he's a journalist, an incredible one, and so he'll go off on his own and uh, um, talk to people and record it, and then we put it all together. It's very cool. I so love you're the show. producing that. Yeah, but you're not in it. No, we are. Dax I and I are that. in it. You are in it. Are mm-hmm. you in all the ones that you produce? No. So we. It, we have the only show right now that we are not involved in that we produce is Nurture versus Nurture, yeah. which is a parenting podcast with Dr. With Wendy Mogul. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Dr. Wendy Mogul. Oh my gosh, please, yeah. Uh, it's an incredible podcast if you're a parent, and I'm not a parent, and I still enjoy it so much. It's so voyeuristic. It's like Esther Perel's marriage podcast, where you just, you know, she's just doing therapy with. Um, these parents and it's so so fascinating but uh we produce that i edit that show we do the nurture versus nurture and we are producing some other shows right now as well that we are not on they are not out yet so that's the that's that's the that's the hustle now armchair umbrella yeah is is expanding the network and the shows that we are on are armchair expert armchair experts on expert armchair and dangerous race to 270 was the one we did yeah. with the the weight uh gain and loss and challenge then monica and jess love boys um and i'm i think i might in- oh and then also we do a bonus episode every month on race that we are on that follows our same structure um do you yeah. are you ever going to consider youtube because it's a never big, say it's, never. It's a big miss for you guys. Big miss. I know, but I want, I'm excited to hear this. But this is where we cut to the Peloton commercial. <laughs> People often ask what a Peloton is. Well, I'll tell you the real reason we don't do YouTube. Well, I know why. I know why you didn't do YouTube for Armchair Expert. Yeah. Uh, people weren't. There's the privacy. That's right. The the way you know. Especially women. I remember Dax told me and Kristen as well, like women get ridiculed for the way they look and they have to get dialed up a certain way and it's not as intimate, et cetera. I exactly. get that. Yes. But there's so many podcasts. There are. And and some of them could be utilized. I mean, the space. dating one with you and Jess, huge miss to not have that with video. Yeah. Well, perhaps the second season might include some video elements. Okay. Let's get there getting worse. Um, yeah, I, I will stop talking about it because now it's like, I, I, you know, I heard you. I hear you. Uh, but good. Yeah. Um, 
do you want to produce things other than podcasts? Yeah, I do. I do. I'm actually tr- uh, working on an animated show right now, working on producing an animated show. Is um, it Do Re Mi show? It's not, but that show's great. Love Jackie. Shout out Jackie Tone. Shout out Jackie Tone. I'm putting on screen right up here. It's a big time for cartoons. Uh, also, what a job. Would you be a voice? Yeah. Yeah? Great. So fun. Um, so, so fun. The dream, right? Animation is the dream. Yeah, because you could, it doesn't it doesn't take away from anything else. Exactly. Although I wonder how much work, like especially for people like us, yeah, how much is it really just going into the booth? Yeah, you of know? course, of course, there's more to it because we can't keep our hands out of anything. But still, like kind of what we were just saying about not having to go get glammed or you know, at two hours before the thing starts is where you when you have to actually start like this, you can just jump right in and do it. Which do I you love. feel that way? Would you have to get glammed? Well, I didn't. Um, so, <laughs> so I, I guess don't. not. I I feel. I, no. I don't. I don't feel restricted in, in that way. I mean, really, ag- again, about being confident in my insecurities, a lot of that has to do with just, like, even when I do get glammed, I'm not super thrilled with the results mm-hmm. either way. <laughs> so I might as well just, like, be comfortable. Uh-huh. What about the, the uh, I very much connect, that's the don't show me, it's fine. Yeah. What about the uh, fact that these cameras are on? Do you feel that you have to censor more? No, but I think my it might have to do with this glass barrier between us. It's not. No. No, it goes I away. The it, yeah, it goes there. away. Yeah, but for some people, it really doesn't, and you can feel it. Like even even for us, you can. T- there's a little bit of difference when we're all together and the someone else is in the room. That so, is a big one. that I can uh, that I agree with. Yeah, I don't want anyone else in the room. It's I, I mean I do. I, for workflow, I want be people better. here. Mm-hmm. Um, I have, you know, 15% of my, my episodes, I'm out of focus. So, like, I want right. somebody there. But, yeah. yeah that, it ruins the intimacy. Yeah. Even when they bring the person. Like, often they have brought, like, their wife with them or some other, you know, a publicist sometimes comes. Yeah. And uh, and you can always feel it's a, the shift is a little bit there. Um, are you comfortable talking money? Sure. Um, what's your favorite bill? No, oh I'm my just God. <laughs> what uh, armchair expert makes so much money? Uh, it does very well. It does exceedingly well. Yeah, and it wasn't an overnight thing, but for for something to be developed to making that kind of money within the first year is uh, lightning. From from a window washer <laughs> to to having a, a nice house now. Yeah. What was that journey like? Of like. Ha- <laughs> I have money now. It is. And I'm looking for specifics. I know. Like things I wouldn't have bought that I did or, oh. you know. <laughs> well, so I, I have always had sort of an interesting relationship with money. I've not ever been someone who's super scared of not having it. Not because I've always had a ton of it at all. In fact, like my parents were so it was their goal in life to get my me and my brother to understand that money is hard to come by mm-hmm. and to get a safe job and to be uh, practical you know that was their mission of course i just like said fuck you am i allowed to say that for if you didn't you could say fuck you but just not about the parents and the mission okay great great um I mean, just I'm like as a moral stance I, yeah um <laughs> i'm having things shit on you uh, you could say fuck <laughs> okay so um yeah, but uh, I totally flew in the face of all that, and then, and then to s- to still have been able to get those things, even though I kind of defied this practicality, I think is like the real uh, um, pride. And I th- and what that you've always been able to figure it out? No, sorry, I, I transitioned. I didn't do a good job there. No, so I I've never been super scared, even though they tried very hard to make me scared. And I think part of it is because I I knew that we were okay, like my family. They my my mom is a computer programmer, my dad is an engineer, and they did well. I mean, we weren't living in like a mansion by any means. Totally just like upper middle class, regular, uh, and. But they would like try to get me to be scared, but I knew that was silly mm. because I knew they were fine. Like not believing your parents' yes. religion. Exactly. Like, no, no, no. But you're saying all this and I know 
you're lying uh-huh. because I can see. I, 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 anyway, so for some reason, I've just never been super afraid of that. They've also been incredible to me. They've helped me along the way. And, um, with bills and stuff, you mean? Yeah, yeah. Like when I first moved out here, my grandparents also gave my, myself and my brother money, which Jack's always likes to throw in my face, um, as something of me being a brat. Oh, that like, I got, like you had this handicap? Yeah, that I got like money given How to me. How much money? It was $30,000, which is nice. Yeah. Very nice. You know, can I tell you something? And, and I'll lead with this so you don't feel on the spot. Yeah. It's so wonderful yeah that i understand 30,000 is nice <laughs> you know like when i first moved here 30,000 is 80,000 exactly <laughs> and now 30,000 is it's a fucking extra 30,000 exactly and i'm not making armchair i'm not i'm not a- anything you know but like what a great you know, just the way you said that, I'm like, oh, yeah, 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 okay, good for well, you. Well, I didn't know how to say it because 30000 is so much money. It's so much money. It is so much money, but the fact <laughs> that he makes it seem like I was given an actual, like, $30, like a million dollar fortune. Yeah. Um, It didn't happen, but it was, of course, it was to come out here by myself and have that was everything. When I came out here, I, I was given $10,000. And I used uh, uh, a few thousand for the first f- a couple months rent. Yeah. Um, my parents got me a mattress. The p- someone that lives near us owns a furniture store. They sent me a Tempur-Pedic. I still use it. Oh. Didn't have a bed frame. I had the mattress on the floor. Yep. No other furniture in my room. I spent seven grand on magic cards. Oh, my God. <laughs> and I ended up selling them a year later, and I made a couple thousand dollars. Oh, good. You made a profit. I made a profit. Had I one of there's a few cards, but the one that I'm thinking of now because I just saw that exact card, a unlimited black lotus PSA 10 that I bought for 1,200 and sold for 1,700 a month ago, sold for 99 thousand dollars. <gasps> I had five black lotuses in different editions and conditions. It's crazy. Are the money. you serious? Yeah. Well, first of all, I don't even know what you're saying. What are magic cards? It's adult Pokemon. Oh. It's poke. It's chess. Trading. It's Dungeons and Dragons chess. It's an amazing game. Amazing. Oh my god. Um. And you can trade cards, and sometimes they're ninety nine thousand dollars. How do we get into this magic? I don't remember. Oh my gosh. Um, money. We were talking about money in general. We were talking about um, how much. Oh, I remember. Unco- How much, I got ten thousand. You got thirty. It was yes, it was and and it was a little uncomfortable uncomfortable for me to say that it was thirty, and I didn't know how to put that into a perspective. But anyway, what was uncomfortable about to, to reveal it? No, but like to say it it was a lot, but it it's not life changing. Was it then? But I think I mean for for then it was life changing. Could in- you have paid rent without it? Hmm. Or could you have paid rent at the type of place you got without it? I could have paid rent and then almost nothing else. Mm -hmm. So it just provided that security that is everything when you first move out here. Mm -hmm. So, yes, so it was life changing. It absolutely was. But when he tries to make fun of me for being a brat, sometimes I'm like, well, I guess. I mean, it's a lot, but it's not that much. You you bitch. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. But we love your hair. We love your hair. You're talking about Dax? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> and, okay. We, and we love your hair, too. Don't. See, at this point, no, no, no. <laughs> so it's too late. Um, it's too late. I have to acknowledge, I'm fine. It's, it is what it is. I've thought about how I wanted to show it. Uh, um, I made a video of me getting this box of cards because I wanted to have it before I, I give, put it away. Yeah. Um, and I made a video. I'm like, I, I don't think I'm going to share that video. So I'm just like feeling like that's, that's, you know. I think you need to. It's just a boring video. It's just me doing the history of magic, and it's boring. <laughs> and it's not even like I'm not even a pro. I'm just a guy that has been following it. Um, well, you are a pro because I don't think very many people know, or I don't. Is it like a very, very widespread, well-known thing? It's uh, it's definitely in the zeitgeist of nerd culture. Okay. Uh, it's been around since 1993. Yeah. It is the number one collectible trading card game. Uh, you've probably heard of Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh! Yu-Gi-Oh! Yeah. Uh, no, no. Only Pokemon. You, yeah. Um, Pokemon branched out in uh, the better marketing. There's shows, there's dolls, and uh, it was fe- it, um, like Happy Meal stuff, and it's yeah. just been around. But Magic is, if you know anything about comic books, and you know, you know Magic. 
Okay. Uh, but it is. I think they're coming out with a magic show soon. Oh. So it's, it's it's definitely underground, but it's like. It's rising. Yeah, it's like. You, I can't think of an example. I guess Twista. I'm trying to think of like a hip hop artist. Like. Oh. Anybody who knows anything about music, I've heard of these people. Right. But if you only listen to the radio, you haven't yet. Got it. Got yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. And they, the car, they smell so good. Oh, they do. They smell so good. I have those. I want to open that box so bad, but the box. It's not. It's the cards are worth a fraction of it. The reason it's so expensive is because it's still sealed. Yeah. The cards inside are not worth that much. So the minute you open it, you're <gasps> lighting money on fire. Oh my god, this is stress. This is like really stressful, stressing me Between out. the coins and the cards and the podcast, I'm a lot of anxiety. <laughs> Your hand is always on fire. Always hurting. <laughs> A little too late. <laughs> okay, but I, w- I do want to answer your question, which is what have and I used? And we are used out of time. <laughs> but thank you so much. No, no, no. That's pretty on brand <laughs> for me. Um, but to to Somebody. say what I bought, what I have bought, or what did it give me? Um, it definitely gave me gave me a sense of security, which is all we're all looking for. Definitely what I'm looking for always. Uh, and 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 I bought a house. I mean, that's really what I used the money for but i also do a fair amount of shopping Uh, speaking of my control issues i use it as a mechanism to feel in control like sometimes i would catch myself in my old apartment like looking around just taking inventory of all the things i wanted to change like oh i need to get a new frame for that picture this coffee table should be gray i need to get a paint or i need to get a new one i want a a chaise you know i just start looking around and finding the ways to make the space perfect and then trying to buy those things and sometimes i'd go to the you know i I love the grove shout out the grove put their instagram handle up here thank you and while we're at it throw up the americana yeah, I like the Americana, but I prefer the Grove because I used to live over there and I could walk. Now, parking at these establishments, not so great. Not so fun. Sure. So the walkable makes element was nice. It's like living above a Whole Foods. Maybe like a Gelson's better, but come on. It, exactly. So I would go there if I was feeling out of control and I would just like buy stuff and it works for about an hour. You know, you feel good holding those shopping bags and it's like, oh, I can't have this in my life and I can't have this and i when you can't but you're getting it no 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 like it, it like oh, it, the things in life like i can't like what like i i i didn't book that job or i this person doesn't like me or i yeah i'm single or like things there's some grand overarching life things that i don't have and want and, and feel like i can't have so you get the chase but i can have this shirt right now so i will buy it so i you know i always have struggled with that a bit and so i do a fair amount of shopping the money has helped with that and you never had a house before you upgraded from renting an apartment to a house right yeah have you moved in yet no it's a it's a whole renovation circus but i am excited about it and i even you know the other thing about the house so exciting to have a house mainly because rent in los angeles is so expensive and it feels like and this y- is an investment yeah you're not getting anything back. you're not getting anything back and it's money in the garbage that's and what i love about magic cards for real it feels like yeah. it's it's not a house but it's the same feeling i can't live in it yeah but it's like it's a it's appreciating it's it's i'm getting i have equity exactly. in it, and i get to look at it sometimes and smell it i can't smell i'm saying i want to open the packs to smell it can you can you no. get a little bit of the no. smell okay the packs the packs sell for 1200 bucks a pack <gasps> I mean, to get a smell. I mean, that's an expensive yeah, that's, perfume. That's an expensive. Yeah. Oh, my God. Maybe that's your goal. Like, if you... I already have it. I know what, what you're going to say. What? Well, you go ahead. Okay. I was going to say, if you get, like, $100 million, yeah. less then... Less than that. I'm, no, let's just let's just keep it really safe. Like, let, let's say I'll you... I'll never open a box then. <laughs> you mean you'll always open it, right? I'll never get to that $100 million. That, that hypothetical is oh, not... Oh, I let's see. Say, let's say $15 million. No, what if you get $100 million for your acting and directing? Separate yeah. from the cards, okay? You have $100 million and you can just open up every single one and you can smell it. Yeah, well, I wouldn't want to degrade them that much. Like, okay. I can't be that selfish with ruining... Like, these things... You know, this is very dramatic, but some of these pieces should be in museums. That's how... Wow. I mean, they're so beautiful and rare and it started such a movement and they're just... Yeah. Look at the... I mean, looking at... It's crazy. The, the feel... You talk about a drug. They're drugs. Looking at this yeah. thing. Yeah. But if I had something, and I, I almost don't want to say it here, maybe we'll cut to a Peloton commercial, mm. something I am working on now, uh, 
is a is a, a magic. We're also a hardware company. Anyway. Okay. So Back from Peloton. Us. Yeah, we'll maybe put that as a separate clip. Sorry for interrupting again. Uh, <laughs> wow, I am fascinated by this because I love um, limited edition stuff. Yeah. I'm pretty. Yeah, like if it says limited edition, I will be buying it. That's what I'd Alpha and Beta it. is called. The original is called limited edition. Oh, I might have to get into this. Listen, I'm having such a good time with you. I also know that it's gone a while, and I miss my dismount all the time. Okay. So I want I want to wrap it up in a second. Let's do it. But I also, uh, uh, I'm sure the stuff that we got wrong and we missed. Well, I'm sure we did, but I can fact check so after. We'll, we'll, have to, we'll have to take care of it and throw it in at the end. Um, but... Uh, you, we mentioned at the beginning, and I wanted to hear what your curb experience was, and were oh, you with Larry? I was. Okay. It was. It was. You know, this is my tendency to always do this: minimize, which. Yeah, um, it was one scene. It was very fast. I played a receptionist at um, Netflix, and it was Larry, and. Um, Jeff. Jeff, thank you. Larry and Jeff. Jeff was on um, our show. And <laughs> he is not one of the champions that we were talking about that you chose. <laughs> no, no, he's not. So it's funny. Like, this is how this is what I feel in general about life. And I, I feel it on the podcast all the time. The the Fuck moment. Me. One of the this I don't know when it happened. Oh, I feel like it was on. Oh, that makes me. So, I'm so mad right now. Don't be. Don't be so mad. It's fine. Okay. <laughs> There's nothing we can do. You'll figure. Yeah, that's I, what I, makes me mad. I know, but you know, you will figure. I understand why you're mad because you're still gonna find a way to make this. Yeah, look I'm gonna good. push it on you, and we'll we'll uh, through a window that's not the perfect reflection. Yeah, and it's and fine. then I'll sharpen it and. Yeah, you can. You, you have the skills. Yeah, thanks. Luckily, not everyone does. Okay. Um. So. Uh, when you, ha my sense is when you go in with an expectation, it's never met. Mm -hmm. And when you have no expectations, it exceeds times a billion because it, it has to. Um, all the people we've had on the show who I've been like, I don't know who that is or, oh, cool. Like this is Dax's friend and I don't know them. They're all, it's always the best episodes. They're always the most interesting. The people who come in who I'm like nervous to, to be sitting next to or talk to are never you know they're great they're great but they're not I've, I've set the bar way too high it's not their fault it's my fault mm -hmm. and that was kind of curb like as soon as I got the audition I was like oh my god I cannot believe I'm gonna be sitting there and um it was a zoom audition right it was actually an I mean, I, literally, this is a three-line thing. This is why this happened, but it was an offer. Nice. Um, and, and it was so fun. It was great. And it was... In, being there in a scene on a show like that, it just feels so like, how did this... How is this my life? You know, you start getting really existential. But um, he's exactly what you think he'd be. He's exactly him. He's a little curmudgeon -y and and brilliant mm -hmm. and you know doing a lot of like like you do on this podcast he's Thank doing you. three things at once in his head he's acting he's directing in his head even though there's a director but he mm -hmm. he has his own vision of course and um and and it's very cool to see but i was really like i I always guest starring on stuff and co-starring on stuff and coming in for a day. You know, I've never been a series regular on anything. So I've only had those experiences. And Where you're a guest. I'm a guest. You feel like a guest at least. Yes. Right. And it's so fun because you get to act and you get to do the thing you've been, you always want to do. But you do feel like an outsider always. And it, and it all, I think for me, it prevents me also from doing my best best mm -hmm. and i hate that because those are the moments you want to do your best because you want to prove yourself yeah but it's it's a very hard environment to come in yeah. on anything yeah. for a day when you're guesting on something as much as you want to feel like i don't want to feel like i'm a guest your job is a guest exactly. it's quite literally it's 
if if you're if you're uh, playing ba- basketball and you're invited to a new game, exactly. you want everyone to think you're the best, but you have to come in and you have to do your role. Exactly. You have to do something. That being said, the job is the guest, right? Like I've I, I was a regular before I was a guest. Yeah. Uh, my first job I had was this regular on a show. Then I was a guest on something, yeah. and I felt. Uh, different I, I i felt different but i i i know what when i'm thinking i just i don't want to like i don't know i guess it's just perspective but basically yeah. you you're i you're the guest is supposed to still make really big strong choices yeah and uh, but not take over it's up to the scene. Yeah, that's true. Well, definitely not in a scene with Larry and Jeff. Not, not in, in, in any. That I've auditioned for Curb a couple of times uh-huh. with Larry. Unbe- wow. I, I didn't get the job and it's still one of the, the most amazing experiences I've ever had. Yeah. Where the mistakes I made and I knew going into the second time and I still ma- I messed up was my job isn't to be funny. My job is to be believable and give him an exactly. environment to thrive. So I'm doing the, I'm the opposite. So it does depend on the show. Yeah. But... But it's always it's it's a con it's it's so hard to self regulate in those moments because this is your hero I know. and he's a comedy god and you want him to know and like even in that case you know I'm saying like three lines and so it's not a it's not a big deal but I'm also like but I can play and I and I want you to know that I can so should I but no I shouldn't because because right. that's not my job here but you want him to know you I mean oh the ego I mean it's all just becomes your whole identity and ego Dax gave me a really great piece of advice I think I mentioned this on the Kristen episode I'm not sure but I'm on Undateable season three comes they're going to the upfronts mm-hmm. uh, in New York to sell advertising shout out to Bombas yeah. Hello, and Bombas. Uh, I never got to go because I'm the sixth lead shout out to the sixth lead such a good show you watched it I loved thank it you. I was not lying when I said that is, I know you was, referenced it yeah but cool thank you um so the third year, uh, instead of it just being the the th- the top two slash three, depending on one of the years, um, they want to have uh, so they're having the two main guys and then two girls, uh-huh. and then there's three of us left, um, and they had one of the guys go, uh, and I felt bad, yeah, because it's it's it doesn't feel like they got to go; it feel like I didn't get to go. Exactly, yeah. My boss, uh, shout out to Bill Lawrence. Blah, 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 he sent me an, an email and me and my buddy David um, and he said who David Finn and I didn't get to go and he said hey this sucks um, if you uh, fly yourself out to New York I'll put you up and I'll make sure you get into all of the things and come wow. along with us very nice and I wanted the experience but I didn't want to be the, you know the person not my that job. flies it yep yep um, person that yeah it's this it's pathetic mm-hmm. right but it's all, not but that's how it feels I, yes is it more pathetic than me wanting that experience right is that experience me going or is that an experience being part of something that i wasn't supposed to be so you just you know when in doubt you ask dax that kind of stuff because sure. he's made all the wrong choices before and, and he can he, wear his hair any way he wants anyway yeah uh and so could you if you get a tattoo sleeve thank you but he knows like he's just been through he he made mistakes and he's also so analytical that he's calculated them and agree or disagree i happen to be he's he gets it yeah um and i say that because what he's telling me isn't objective but yeah. it, it's enough to where I, I, that I, that's what i need to hear and he said um don't raise your hand for anything he said your job is to be liked to people to want to work with you which i still literally check in with that when i don't know what my intentions are because you feel like at least for me I'm supposed to be funny. I'm mm-hmm. supposed to play. I'm supposed to be able to hit three pointers. Whatever it is, we think this is what our value is. But like, your only job is to do whatever your job. Is. Make people. I know that I would rather work with people I like than people who are like, oh, that would be you know, like you want that. Yeah. Um, as soon as he said that, it made it so easy to be like, oh, I'm not gonna go. My job is to yeah. deliver these lines, which I can't do because I don't know how to do this type of show. <laughs> but I'm not going to then also say, here I am. You yes, know? yes. Um, yeah, that's good advice. But I love that. Don't raise your hand for stuff. Just like, just do. Just show up and do. Just, just show up and do what you're supposed to do. Yeah. But then it's like, yeah, but I'm su- I want Larry to know. I know. You know? But Larry needs to know. Yeah. 
It's it's a bad. It's a. Did you make him laugh? No, God, no, no. And I didn't think I I, I did make Jeff laugh once. What was it um, like to work with him after the podcast? He knew who you were. Well, so. Ah, uh, that's what I was reading. Yeah. <laughs> he said, "Nice to meet you." <laughs> he he pulled a Rick Glassman. No, he 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 didn't. He well, he did. He came up and he introduced himself to me. And I said, um, yeah, it's, it's so good to see you. Actually, I, 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 I co-host Armchair Expert, which you were on. Did he come in or was it Zoom? It was in person. It was a long time ago, though. It was obviously a long time ago. Nothing's been in. Uh, right. But it was even it was really early on, I think. And and it was at the time where our chairs were configured uh, right now they're configured so that I sit next to Dax and we sit across from the guest. Before I was sitting on the yeah. couch next to the guest. That was hard. Yeah, great change. It, I've thought about it before you even did it. It made such yeah. a big difference because every time I talked, they had to be like, Yeah. It was bad. Yeah, it's easy to, absolutely. So, um, it's like Dax was the guest. Exactly. Yes. So, so that has made such a big difference. I love that. But so I was sitting next to him on the couch. So this was in our old configuration. Anyway, he said, I said, and he said, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're that girl who's sitting next to me. And I was like, that's, yeah. your, that's your babysitter. <laughs> yes. But also way worse because I'm about to do the scene was on he busting Curve. Balls? No, he wasn't. You he sure? Was, well, no, I don't know. But I, I, I don't think so. I think he was literally just like, "Oh yeah, there was a person there sitting there, yeah. and it was you." Um, and and I had to really shake. <laughs> Was this before? The, this is before. Yes. Yes. Oh, so you go. You got a lot of layers in there. Uh -huh. now. I want to make him laugh and tell him to go fuck himself. Exactly. Uh -huh. And I. But also, no. I mean, it, it, he didn't mean anything negative by it. It just. It just struck all these nerves that I already have. And um, but it was fine, and it was it was fun, and it was just like a thing that I got to drive away from and be like. I just got to do a scene with a legend on the greatest show of all time. On the greatest comedy of all time. There's just I'm lucky. Like, that's it. I'm just lucky. I know we were going to wrap this up already, and we're still about to, but I, I, that is, I want to be on that show so bad. Yeah. I, uh, I sent Allison Jones an email recently. Yeah. Somebody, uh, uh, somebody sent me a, um, a breakdown of uh, them looking, Actors Access or something, them looking for 6'3 and above who could play basketball background. Yeah. And I said, uh, if, if we can't find something else, I, will, will, I just want to be in the universe, uh -huh. you know? And uh, and then she she laughed and she sent me, which is so cool. She just sent me a, a, a here uh, here's an audition for like another thing, um, but I could the dates oh. couldn't happen because of my show, um, and I think I'm gonna reach back. I would need because this might be the last season. Yeah. Um, I I want to do back. I want to I want to be on it. That's how I. That is how I felt also leaving. Like oh my god, I got it. I got to. I got to do it in general. I can't believe it. And before it ended and yeah. it keeps, you know, it just got put, you know, it's just pushed and pushed and pushed and I got to get in there and I know how badly everyone wants to be on that show. But I do say, and I've said this to Dax too, cause he was like, what? Like he was so, he's like, I just want to like, you know, I want to just be in the background or, and I was like, the problem is you can't. And I can. And so You're that's why I was able to. Because of his recognizability. No, his recognizability. Like, unfortunately, you're too big to do the part I, I did. Well, that's not, if they're out to eat somewhere, and that could be Dax Shepard well, eating in the background. Then it could be like a fun, yeah. a fun little Easter egg, I guess. But, uh, but you know what I yes, mean. Yes, I do. And, and, and it's, it was a weird thing where it's like, oh, the, the mediocrity of my success is what has led me here that's a beautiful thing that never happens that's the power of a guest star that's right that is right are you going to oh i had this question i had to ask you and then we're done okay um maybe edit out all the and we're done's um and that is he on the list have you approached as a guest no i mean he's of course on our like wish list but i haven't approached I should. I don't know why I haven't. There's some people who you feel like, oh, they'll just never 
do it, but why wouldn't I ask? I've had people on that I felt that. I mean, we had Bill Gates and Hillary Clinton on. Yeah. So. I mean, you literally, yeah. <laughs> Uh, and Obama's talking. About I am you guys. asking about. I am trying very hard to get the president. Amazing Barack how we're Obama. seeing. But I understand. Like <laughs> yes. this is where Larry is. <laughs> yeah, I'm like okay. I can definitely reach out, and I am. I am truly like sending emails to trying to get to Obama. But I'm like, but we can't ask Dave Chappelle. <laughs> like he'll never, ever, ever do it. He is for me is my number one, Dave Chappelle. Can I tell you a Chappelle story? Yes. You're not going to tell me, but this is going long, and it is what it is. Okay. Yeah. So just cut me some slack. Yeah. Um, Slack is cut. I have talked about this on the podcast, so just full transparency, I'm bragging. Okay. Uh, I'm actually going to expand the story because I don't think I told the whole one. Uh, I get, I, I break up. Well, I, I, I got broken up with, um, and uh, I'm sad. Yeah. And uh, I'm seeing my therapist. I'm sad, and I go to the comedy store that night, and I do a set that was a l- different from what I normally do. I was just telling a, a story that just happened. How. My therapist, had, uh, I, I was crying and she offered me the tissues and I pulled it out and it was toilet paper and it was like you know, toilet paper. And then I, my, my therapist said, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. And I made my therapist feel bad. And oh. I'm just like, I'm trying to figure out, you know, what's going on. And it was, uh, it was just a very intimate type of set that um, Chris Rock, Rock comes in and uh, he ends up going up after me. And we, uh, I get off and then I didn't know he was, he's going on. And it wasn't like, he, there was forced eye contact. He made a point to when he was g- going on to go, hey man, keep doing that. And he <gasps> emphasized that as if he knew I normally don't do that. Right. Which he didn't or he did. Yeah. But like that was like, okay. And so I have now, that changed my direction a little. It added wow. to my direction. And then a month, I don't know if it was a month, th- this was February in March. I'm in the comedy store main room. And the last time I was in the main room before then, I had, been shitty to i had this joke that was a little dark about how why why are moms fat like moms are just always mm. getting get fat <laughs> and um and if the best the kind of diet for a mother over 50 is to get a divorce it's, a, it's not my tone it's not my thing but i did make an observation that a lot of moms are fat and yeah. i thought it, i wasn't meaning to be like uh, roasting like so, yeah yeah you know it's just like oh the girl on my left she were <laughs> you know so anyway i do that and uh it it doesn't go what it didn't get a, the, the laugh you wanted the, the laugh that I felt mm-hmm. so I leaned in not leaned in fuck you I leaned in with like well you have to understand like when you're, you're, you're eating healthy but like you're pouring ranch all over it at what point am I being <laughs> shitty for saying like mom you can't eat that and then it's not going well. So now I'm not even talking about my mom, but there's inspiration with my mom. Sure. And my mom went, did go on this diet. And I'm always like, you, and now we're drinking diet sodas, but that's just drink fucking water, man. Yeah. Yep, so yep, anyway, yep. mom looks great. And this was a different time. We love moms. You don't know. You don't know my mom. And I'm not going to sell you on it. You have no idea. And I'm, you have no idea. She sucks. No, I'm just kidding. She's <laughs> unbelievable. She's been on my podcast a few times. Aww. But. Do you need anything before we get started? Oh, we're getting started now? We're about to, yeah. I don't think so, so long as I'm cute. You look cute. Just make sure my stomach doesn't stick out. Should we get something to cover it? Yeah. Like what? How about a little... You want to cover your stomach with that big... Okay, I'm ready. (laughs) So this is the special 50th episode. My mom has always dreamed of coming to England. Dream. Oh, we are really here. Oh, everybody's got a flipping crown on. Look at this. I'm so excited. I want the nicest room you could possibly give me for the least amount of money. I have AAA, I have ARP, I have everything. Here's my medical card. Oh my God, this place smells so good. I want to get a picture of me with that guy. Disability. So we have hearing dogs or blind dogs. How cute is that guy?
Let's do our let's do our shtick. We have the same routine that we always do. I'll get it started. You ready? Yeah. Okay. Hey, mom. What time's dad coming home? <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> I don't know, Rick. He usually gets home between five and five thirty. Well, I guess we're gonna have to take a big poop. <laughs> We'll tell people about this sweatshirt. Oh, goblins. Uh, you can take your shoes off goblin sweatshirt. Even. Yes, you goblins, <laughs> you can take your shoes off goblin sweatshirts. Thank you so much. We will be selling the take your shoes off sweatshirts at rickglassman.com. You guys leave a comment below and let me know if next time my mom is on the podcast, if you'd like her to cover her stomach again, or if you'd like to see all of my mom. Okay. Scoot do. I do believe you. No, no. Bobbity blue. Oh, bobbity blue. Bobbity blue. Oh, wait a minute. Pip pip. Cheers. Oh, yes. Cheers. Oh, fish and chips. Fish and chips is a good one. <laughs> Let's go get fish and chips for lunch. That would be fun, Ricky. Let's walk someplace and get fish and chips for lunch, okay? Will you just Thank sing you. a little bit for me? Oh, no. I'm not going to sing. In this lifetime. So let me say before we part, so much of me is made of what I learned from you. You'll be with me. Oh Sing it! Who can say if I I've been changed for the better? But because I knew you. Because I knew you. Because I know you, you, I have been changed for good. We did it. We did it. And you this fun. was one of the best moments of my life. I ended up accidentally being mean to my mom. And mm. I was I was ashamed of that set. I bombed I think every time I've been on, but I've never felt ashamed. Yeah. So now I'm back in this room, sense of memory. The last time I was on the stage, there's not that many people in the room and I'm talking about the last time I was here, the only, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna master this joke. So I finally get to do my special and the one person who's always cared about me, I get to look and say, you fat fuck. Like, what am I, what am I trying to build? Yes. Which by the way, mom, you look beautiful. My mom looks beautiful. I love your mom. Um, ranch isn't great though. You, I'll that, keep going. I'll keep it, going. I'm sorry. I'm, I took a beat as if like. Well, I really had to think about it for a second because it tastes good. Yeah, but it's but it's 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 not good for you. It's it's not it's 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 not taking you know switching from this to this with all the ranch doesn't. It's fine. It's just an, it oh, might as well be this. It's a lateral move. Yes. Yeah. That's what I'm looking for. A lateral move. Yes. So I do this set, and it's another one of these the, those moments. And then I get off stage, and I'm sitting in, by the door in the corner, and. Uh, a few minutes later, uh, an entourage of people um, walk past, and so does Chappelle. They walk past. Now, this isn't, a, again, a thing. Chappelle leaves. A beat and a half later, he comes back no. in. Comes back in. He taps me on the shoulder. And, uh, dude, that's really good. Uh, I said, uh, I, I wanted to say, I, I said everything I was supposed to say. Here's what I did on the outside. I went, thanks, man. You know, but yeah. like it was. So, uh, so and cool. then he did again. Seriously. Very funny. Um, and then leaves and then, you know, I'm cool because I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then later that day I'm, I'm going outside. Oh He's outside God. in the parking lot and I walk by the parking lot so many times <laughs> waiting for the eye contact and the invite over. But anyway, there's my brag story <laughs> within, within two months, one month of each other up to Chris me, Chris Rock, Rock and, and Dave, Dave Chappelle. Chappelle. So are you cool. dead? Are you a ghost in front of me right now? Because I'd be dead. No, they're the only two people that have ever said it <laughs> but those are the only so these are our champions going back yes they didn't choose me but in that moment i felt chosen you know what i mean they did choose you because they came to you i mean they didn't choose me to be my champion well yeah but that's okay but, it, but that's that drug yes. where i and also to them they they've told other people good job but the circumstance that they came they made they went out of their way yeah especially Chappelle, and also just you know we need champions and i feel like mm. i haven't had many with stand-up especially when i was first starting out so to get it, it was just oh very validating. And, and I do recall that sometimes when it's, Oof. anyway. I, I think he's as close to deity status as I'll give a person. Who do you prefer, Larry or Chappelle? Chappelle. Um, yeah. He's like, for, he, for me, because also, because I know I'm supposed to wrap up, but his comedy is so poignant. Mm -hmm. And it could be a drama. 
Ex- it, it is that. riding the line of like you are laughing so hard and then you also kind of want to cry because it's so real mm-hmm. and true and he's making such a beautiful commentary on so many things so many important things he's sh- he's shining a light on in this oh my god i just i i think he's and i really don't like using the word but i really do think he's a genius why don't you like using the word because it's played yeah and like is anyone really a genius yeah but i think you he know is. I, I i i am oh okay you are well, well <laughs> you did that really mm-hmm. wow uh do you have you always loved him or is it a newer thing it's newer i was not into the Ch- i was not into the Chappelle show i was y- much younger you've seen killing them softly no it's a great it's it is these it's his that's is it his, you'll watch it. That's okay. his. That's I think it's, it's his first. first? It's, I found out about. At least I don't remember. I mean, I saw him in g- things, but I do remember loving Half Baked and then finding uh, Killing Him Softly. And it's okay. I'm it's so not the excited. same. It's it's a younger energy. Yeah. Um, it's. I mean, it's the jokes are amazing. It's not as. Um, it's not. There's still commentary, but it's not as uh, deep. Yeah. Um. It's just. Uh, oh, the best thing I could compare it to at least then was Chris Tucker had something. Where you, it doesn't matter. There's an energy that Chris Tucker had. I don't know if you remember. I mean, if you watch, I, re- I rewatched Rush Hour last year and it holds oh. up. Mm. And it's just like, there's just an energy yeah. that works. Um, Chappelle has that energy, but then also they're jokes that you could tell. Like, yeah. like I want to hear, the joke works on its own and then you want to hear him say it. And I was blown away. Yeah. Um, oh, I'm so you should, excited. You should watch it. It's, yeah, I, I, I think it might be, it's definitely a top five special of all time, but it might be number one. You've never even heard of it. It's it's old. It's old. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. He's he's not. I wouldn't say new to me, but he's. Um, but with, since his return back, where exactly. he's like big, big. His return who's been back, and and that's also part of it. I find the fact that he left so fascinating and so admirable. Um, he did a, a speech at. Uh, the college that I think his grandfather worked at and he did a speech there and it was really again beautiful and funny and incredible and and he kind of talks about this he doesn't I mean I'm gonna do this so I don't I don't we'll I fact check hardly it. even yeah I'll read it on the fact check <laughs> but he leaves you know he just talks about the the moral imperative of him leaving basically and walking away from 50 million dollars and what that means. I wonder if he now and feels about 50 million what you feel about 30k. I hope so. <laughs> God, I hope so. He could so. open up all the magic cards if he does. Oh my God, he could smell the shit out uh-huh. of them. Mm. Yeah, but just like yeah, what it takes to walk away from money like that and now he then he signed a deal with Netflix for and $60 got the Chappelle uh, off. He, he got exactly. the, you know, changed that around. So cool. He's so cool. He's too. so cool. He's not like LeBron cool, which is the coolest kind of cool there is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. cool like you just, you know, I'm going to give Chappelle option A or B and you don't need to know what it is. You know, like he's probably taking the the right one and exactly. I want to hear why he took it. Exactly. There's, some, he's, there's something spiritual about yeah. him. It, I just, yeah. Mm, I love him. We have the same birthday. When is that? August 24th. This year? Of this year, it's August 24th. Next year, it might change, but... This uh, well, year. happy birthday, depending on when this comes out. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Depending on how long the fact check, fact check <laughs> takes. Um, but w- when you when you reach out to guests, is it people? Is it do, PR? You have bookers? Do you do it? Is it a combination? I do it. I mean, we all kind of do it, but I do it mainly the reach out, but also at this point, many people come to us for promotion. When it's somebody who's a big get. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you when you reach out is it instagram is it email is it agent and is it as you is it as you and dax do you have enough clout do you feel to say hey we're doing this yeah it's it's email and it's me but i always say it's monica padman from armchair expert podcast with dax how do you get the shepherd um agents publicists i mean at this point i have sort of a network of people i can ask and then also so connections so someone will be like hey connecting you and monica from armchair expert or something like that that's always really nice um i'm really close with Kristen's publicist marcel he helps me out getting emails yeah so so has anybody turned you down 
all the time. Could you tell us anybody? Taylor Swift. I'm dying. She said she didn't respond or she said no. No, they they've said no, but they're so sweet about it. Like she, they're like, yeah, we love it. We love you. You guys are awesome. She's just busy. You know, she just doesn't she just doesn't do press. She right. doesn't have to. But I want her. Right. I want her. Has anybody has anybody been a challenge and you got it? Yeah, like there have been some people who we've been trying for a long time that finally end up happening. Let's see. Uh, Julia Louis Dreyfus was a long time in the making. Who else was a long time in the making? I mean, a lot of them. A lot of them, it's like you, you put out the feeler and they're like, not right now, but then something comes up for them later, a project, and then they'll reach back out. When, do you feel there's a high school dance, uh, even at your level? Because I do. Uh, with this, with like, we don't want to be too needy. Also, also, listen, I, I, this is a great show, and they, they didn't want to come on, so I'm not going to ask again. Then the door is open. Oh. Like, are there any? Uh, I feel like Dax has that more than me. I don't have much of that. I am very, very good at asking for help, one, and for like for things that you're comfortable asking for. Yes, I'm, I'm like not with editing. Correct. The correct. But I'm I'm I mean like I'm not someone who's like if I can't do something, I'm totally good being like, Can you help me do this? I know you know how. Can you teach me or can you yeah. do it? Or I have no problems with that. And I have no problems being like we really I'd really love for you to come on. Yeah. We'd really love But if they say they either don't respond uh -huh. or they say yes, but then you say how about this date and they don't respond. Yeah. Do you want to wait a certain amount of time before reaching back out? Yeah, I wait a little bit and then I'm like checking back in. Right. I'm t I'm totally fine to do that. I have no cuz it works. And and not like I'm not badgering them and I'll say like I'm so sorry if I'm flooding your email and it's true. I don't want to be a nag, but I also don't want to drop the ball. Yeah. And sometimes you just drop the ball. Like I drop the ball on my end where I'll forget about an email and they'll be like, oh, yeah, oh, I'm so glad you checked back in. So I just like to, you know, keep popping up every now and then. Um, I felt uh, that way when Kristen said yes and then all that shit happened. And then I had to ask her to come back on another time. <laughs> but she was very gracious. Yeah. And she got me this. Should I have you a present? She's a really good gift well, giver. I, I, bought, I bought this picture of her. Oh, my gosh. Uh, fake autograph but she signed it for real oh oh wow yeah wow wowie yeah. what does it say my eyes aren't great uh that's what it's yeah my eyes aren't great uh <laughs> dear rick you have the best uh buns in the business jk jk because she pointed to buns and i guess dax says something like that she said she took that from dax oh wow and i was thinking about um reporting this and getting my money back sure but then i got a little bit uncomfortable with the people are gonna if, if somebody ever finds out it was me oh from because i'm I did it publicly so i just i ate the ate the eight bucks wow plus shipping um yikes but yeah she should pay you back for that eight bucks she didn't do it there was a fake signature but she has the money see and that's where i get uncomfortable asking i, I should mm -hmm. ask her for it yeah you should would you ask i will and will i'll you? report back oh so i okay bomba's Kristen eight dollars plus shipping forget the second one um but uh just Bombas, and then I'll reach out to you. We'll, we'll talk more about this on the fact check, uh, okay. whether it's true or not, but we'll say it is. Uh, we'll have you help me get some guests. Okay. I'll, I'll do If it. I get you Chappelle, I think I could get Chappelle. If you got me Chappelle, I'll get you... Who's your dream guest? Um, well, I, I had him on once. I haven't posted yet, is Will Smith. Wow. And... Wow. And we were putting our second, we're doing our second, um, we were doing a two part thing. And he, it was his idea. Well, oh. it was my idea, but he, I was joking. He heightened it and blah, blah, blah. And uh, then he said yes. And now I'm waiting for it, but he hasn't gotten back to me. And that's where I do, I reach back out. And I, mm. I don't want to be, should I just put out the one part as it is? Because I've been talking about it for months now. Um, wow. But my number one would be to have him come back. Yep. Uh, and then probably LeBron. I've tried LeBron as well. Have you? Even yeah. with Space Jam, he wouldn't do it, huh? Now's your time. Now is another opportunity. I got to get back. I'm going to, you know, if if he says yes, I'll say thank you very much. But you're and you're going to come to a, this is the address and I'm going to give your address. And he's going to arrive here. And I, he's going to think it's the show. What a great 
documentary. That's right. Getting LeBron James. <laughs> and this is what it is. <laughs> that would be a great doc. Let's do it. Did he? Did they say no? Did they not respond? They've responded. Who this was is, it? Was it Maverick Carter? It was, no, I didn't get as close to Maverick. I didn't get close enough to Maverick. I got to like a publicity person in his camp. They were going to at one point and then they had to, you know, they, then they couldn't. And then it was like no's for other things. But you're right. I should nope. check back in yeah. with the Space Jam. The, another very sad um, situation with Trevor Noah. We had him booked. And then best friend Aaron Weekly got sick. And Dax had to go to Michigan, and so we couldn't record with him, and we have not been able to get him back since. And this was like years ago. Is he years a big ago. get for you? Yeah, I love Really? Him. I love hey, I think him. he's great, too, but like that, I mean, the people we're talking about. I know. But there's something about, I just think he his conversation, like it would just be so interesting. So it's not always about like the level. It's what I think the conversation will be. Yeah, I, I look at those as the same thing, based yeah, on the true. level. Like, yeah, I would rather have John Stewart than Trevor Noah. Oh, yeah, but John Stewart would never do it. I could get you Stewart. Wow. Oh, my. These promises. <laughs> these aren't promises. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, all right. Well, listen, I, 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 nice to meet you. <laughs> really nice um, to meet you. This was great. And uh, thank you for sticking around. Uh, stick around for another while for a fact check. <laughs> uh, keep that one in. But this, I had a, such a nice time talking me with too. you. Me too. Thanks for having me. And thank you for letting me clean your window. Absolutely. Thank you for I cleaning very my much, window. I enjoyed that. And uh, I'm, you know... For a half hour, you're going to uh, have a reflection. And for a half hour, we're going to not have your camera on. But it was meant to be that I had a reflection. Yeah. Because then I will have a reflection again. There and I'm just supposed to have a reflection, maybe. When you, Again, are you talking about reflecting as far as the, the fact check? Or did you mean that literally? Wow. I meant literally. Oh, but was, it could I'll work on an anal- analogy level as well. Metaphor. Well, well, I'll see you. I'll see you. See you later. I'll see you later. <laughs> Welcome to the check. fact check. Fact check. Okay. okay. This is what Dax does. He brings me in with a jingle often. Mm-hmm. So thank you for doing that. Sure. It's the fact check. Oh, oh, no, oh I wasn't was trying to do a comedy thing. I really felt I had it in me. I liked that. Yeah, but you're kind of a you're a born supporter. Well, I listen. I the fact check song isn't supposed to be um, like pleasing to the ear necessarily. Okay, well, it's it's just it's just um, a nice little ditty to get us in. Welcome to the fact check. And often this is exactly what happens. There's like multiple songs, and he can't stop. So you're doing a great job. What was that? I couldn't really see my TMJ retainer. Oh, and I, I mean. I would love to get him as a sponsor. I'd give him a discount because holy shit, has it helped? I, really? I couldn't. I could barely open my mouth this time last year, and now really? I can't shut the hell up. Welcome <laughs> to the fact check. I'm sorry. Go ahead. First time I fact checked a non armchair expert. This is the first time I've been part of any fact check ever on a podcast. It was fun, but first I have to mention because you're wearing Bombas right now. Thank you. And we know the listeners are waiting to hear, did I come through? I did not come okay, through. Okay, <laughs> but, 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 I'm getting there. So, so, as you now know, I have said on our show during our Bombas ad. Appreciate that. I referenced this podcast and yeah. that Bombas really needs to get involved. You should sponsor it'd be, him. It'd be crime if you didn't sponsor yes. Rick Glassman. So that's step one. So this is just going to take a couple more steps than I anticipated. Can I also say Yeah. that um, <laughs> uh, Dax has mentioned me on the podcast a few times. Mm-hmm. He's even mentioned that I have a podcast. This is the first time that you guys mentioned the name of the podcast. Oh. And I was very excited. Oh, good. Okay. It was like a, it wasn't just, it was, it was a, it was a plug. It was a plug for the podcast, not just for me for Bombas. It was. So I think you came through. Thank you. But get me the money. Yeah, I will. I will. I'll show up for you. I just, it's going to take some time. You really think that you I'll get a Bomba sponsorship out of this? Yeah, because we, we can turn this into a bit. We can, Every Bomba <laughs> spot can be about that, and they're going to have to come through at some point. Okay. 
But and real so quick, far, let me interrupt. I just want to say that what makes that so exciting is that Bombas aren't just comfortable. They don't just last, but they look cool. They, there's something that you notice. How often do you walk in a room and notice someone's no, that's socks? For, that's for real. As soon as I first saw you last time, I was like, oh my God, you're wearing Bombas. Oh, this is a perfect, you know, yes. this is how it happened. But yeah, they're striking. Yeah, and the Hex technology or whatever the fuck that thing is, <laughs> looks like a beehive on your foot. But man, but cute. I love them. Very cute. Um, all right. So do you want to, so this is what happened. So you sent me the episode, just a little behind the scenes, BTS. You sent me the episode. I listened. I watched. I pulled some facts. Um, and uh, in full transparency, I finished that this morning. Okay. I drove over. And I had to actually check the facts in my car before I got out. The fact check, fact check. Yeah, like I made the list, but then I have to do my research. Like, then I have to look up these facts. Yeah. So that happened a short seven minutes ago. Uh, thank you for allowing me to give you homework. <laughs> You're, I mean, I always feel really productive when I've, I mean, for real, I actually, that's true. That's true about me. Um, I like homework. So when does Mortal Kombat come out? To, uh, it just came out. It's out. Came out when this comes out. It came out on uh, this last Friday. That's right. It is out. It's on HBO Max. Mm-hmm. Check out Josh Lawson. Uh-huh. Mortal Kano, Kombat. Mortal Kombat. Did you see it? Not yet. Me either. I think I'll watch it today. Me too. That's not true because I'm going to a birthday party. Happy. Birthday. I had to fact check myself. Sure. By time. Happy birthday, Molly. I don't want to. I don't want to do much more editing, so I'm not going to put her Instagram handle up. <laughs> you don't need okay, to. Okay, but you can message message one of us, and we'll probably we'll hook respond. you up with Molly. <laughs> and we will hook you up with Molly. <laughs> okay, so one quick fact: um, you were talking about your proficiency in analogies, which I highly agree I'm with. I'm like the Michael Jordan of basketball. That's right. So that Unrelated. was unrelated. That's. That was my fact, because <laughs> you said that, and of course, I thought you just said that on accident. What would be accident? Wait, you're the Michael Jordan of analogies. Yeah, it's a joke. Okay, yeah, exactly. So I thought you just made a mistake. Oh. I, I didn't catch that that was a joke, because you said it so fast. Yeah, I don't. And you're acting so good. I don't want this to sound, I don't, I'm not, because I have my Fault, false. Yeah, of course. But you would never make that mistake. I I don't miss much. <laughs> yeah. Um that makes it past <laughs> the editing. So Right, but I didn't know if you would I didn't know if you had just not done that yet. No, 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 no. Um I uh, I also want to actually just make sure cuz I'm I don't know if I'm proud of this, but I need people to know I keep in the the misses too. Oh, that's nice. I want people to know the misses. But no, that's that's a that is a joke I have told before. So maybe it came a little quick. It came so quick. Blew right past me mm-hmm. in the moment. And then I figured I'd call you out. And now this is really... Was that something you were going to call me out with? Yes, I have it written down. Well, so let me not interrupt. Tell me what you were going to say. You were talking about analogies and you said you're like the Michael Jordan of basketball. And that's you were going to say I should have said I'm like the Michael Jordan of analogies. That's right. Can I tell you something? Yeah. I didn't remember... Because I didn't edit the whole episode. I'm uh-huh. going through a lot more this weekend. Yeah. I didn't remember that then I even said, said that. that to you. <laughs> and then you said <laughs> it just, again. It's just, I mean, I, 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 since you were bringing that up, it was probably yeah. something maybe, but yeah. That's funny. So is um, Michael Jordan of basketball, that's like in your rotation? It's not necessarily Michael Jordan. It's just that structure. It's yeah. just that, um, you know, he's the Tiger Woods of this. He's the Michael Jordan of this. He's the Rick Glassman of this. Got but it. Uh, uh, yeah, but you just switch out. You take the be- the something. It, anybody who's a name that you know what they are. These are LeBron James. I like this. And then um, instead of making the analogy, you, you just make you yourself what- that thing, mm-hmm. and then it's just guaranteed laughs. Okay. Or they think you made a mistake, and you <laughs> talk about it later. And then they get embarrassed. Okay. Um, great. I'm gonna use this in the next week, and I'm gonna report back how it went. You gonna use that bit? Yeah. You don't like, you don't want me to take it. You could take it. You could borrow it. <laughs> you just told me how to do it. So, and you told a lot of people listening how to do it. And you told Bombas. Yeah, but not everybody listening has the platform. 
You're right. Oh, I'm not going to do it on the podcast. Okay. I'm just going to do it in life. I'm going to do it at the birthday party. Okay. If you do it at the birthday party and it works well, and then you want to add it to your repertoire, and you do end up doing it on a podcast. I'll give you credit. At least in the fact check. Not in the moment. You don't have to interrupt. Okay. If you get a laugh with a cool guest, you don't have to be like so-and-so, you know what I mean? <laughs> but later on. <laughs> well, but this circles back to what I said in the episode. I'm very credit sensitive, mm-hmm. so I would definitely give you credit. Okay. So don't worry. And I'm also probably going to forget and not uh-huh. not do it. Okay. Windex kills 99.9% of germs and viruses and bacteria on hard, non-porous surfaces. That's what it says, and that's what my research says. I didn't do any personal research. Like, I didn't do a science experiment. Do you have time? I have a lab coat. Uh, four hours podcast. <laughs> Yeah, so... But what'd you do? You just looked at the bottle or Googled it? I Googled. Okay. And obviously, it's going to say the same thing that it says on the bottle. Right. But I believe it to be true because I feel like people... There would have been things that popped up that said, actually, no, Windex is not very efficient or whatever. Uh-huh. And I didn't see any of that. Okay. That's a very... That's a like a... That's a fact. That was so, so that's factual. So like, you have to acknowledge. Exactly. I couldn't blow past it. Yeah, and I got to say something. You really did a clear... That will... Um, uh, uh, oh. My job at... The podcast came- ends now. <laughs> <laughs> we stopped being able to talk. Yeah. Is there no wordplay on that? Oh. I mean, there could be, a, I guess... A, you know, I, I, yeah. You know what? I got it. I'm sorry. Okay, We're going to keep it in because we're keeping the misses and oh. the misters. Yeah, I guess uh, Windex was has been pretty transparent. Wow. Thanks. That was really nice. Thanks. I'm going to borrow it. Um, no, that one is mine. <laughs> <laughs> Cut to you at the birthday party. Windex <laughs> is transparent. <laughs> <And> everyone, ah! <laughs> you guys are selling Windex is transparent merch. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god okay you said you never knew or you said you don't know if the connection is dopamine or oxytocin mm-hmm. dopamine i said dopamine versus oxytocin in my search i normally don't tell people how i search but for you i will can i guess some yeah part yeah oxytocin is it is the connective chemical mm-hmm. uh hugs eye contact the um, love hormone the love hormone mm-hmm. dopamine uh, I know y- y- you get it from things that like it, that's the big part of addiction. Exactly, but Reward you can be center. addicted to love and that stuff. So absolutely. So so where both are we at? things are happening. Mm-hmm. I think um, dopamine is your reward center. Well, I'll just read. Dopamine is your brain signal that a reward is at hand. The joyful, excited feeling is released when you approach something that meets an unmet need. Oxytocin is the good feeling of social trust. It's released when you find the safety of social support. So dopamine is is what the Pavlo, Pavlovian thing is. It's it's teaching you, let's keep coming back for this. Exactly. This we think is good for us. It's really the anticipation. It's not even the actual thing, which is fascinating. You, do, you don't get dopamine from a thing? Well, Dax is, is reading a book, read a book about on sleep. Um, no, maybe it wasn't on sleep, but it was on dopamine and i think the conclusion and what it says here is it's actually the anticipation that your body is releasing the chemical like you get excited about the heroin so it so it forces you to go get the thing exactly so you're on a constant search for it and when you get Mm. it it's not enough because that's not the actual thing you're chasing Interesting. It's very interesting. And um, you know, social media does that too. Uh-huh. The likes, you're anticipating these likes. Yeah. Social media is another entire episode we can and should do. Okay. Um, was Kristen our first episode? Yes. I we did First re- recorded or first posted? Both. So we recorded it first. And we released, as I think I said this, but we released three on the same day. But Kristen is first. She's number one. She's episode one on Armchair Expert. Ashton is two and Joy is three. There is, uh, I think it's, it might be five. It's five or six. We'll say six times I've ever been wrong on this podcast. Wow. But I didn't know it was recorded first. 
You did. You what were is half that? right. What is that where even though I'm joking, I still felt to say, yeah, but I did like part you of You wanted it. me to know that you were a little bit right. What is that? Is that dopamine seeking? <laughs> I don't think so. I think um, you, we could get deep right now. We do this on fact checks because I believe Dax to do a very similar thing. And we just had this conversation on one of our fact checks because I said, because he likes to guess things about people. So we had someone on and the guy said, you know, oh, I really love your movies. And he said, let me guess which one you like. And like, this is what he does. And he likes to guess what kind of car people have. And it's great. It's fun. It's really fun. And people like it a Are lot. Are you okay? Are nope. you guys in a fight? No, nope. <laughs> we're always in a fight. Um, but it gets resolved. That's part of the beauty of our show. No, but we're not in a fight right now. I love him. I love him dearly. But um, yeah, so so he does this. And, and we talked about it on a fact check. Like, why do you think you do that? Is it to show is it to prove you're right or is it to prove you're paying attention like and i think it's a mixture so i assume what you're doing is a mixture of things as well yeah and 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 i'm sure there's a very positive part of it and i'm sure there's maybe a, a an ego element of it as too you know i i agree that our ego needs to be kept in check but it has some really bad pr Okay, go, go on. Tell me Just more. Just a buddy of mine works with the same PR as Ego, <laughs> and, and he's bad. not worked in a while. Okay, okay. Uh, it, like, uh, why is it so... By the way, this is the, this is the part that where I'm saying it has bad PR. There's, uh, there's right. a lot of stuff where it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. Know, they're doing... We, we, you know, it's not great. It's made a name for himself, and we understand why. Yes. But this shame of like wanting to present, curate our identities... Mm. And like be a thing which, you know, obviously, well, why are you pretending? Why are you faking? Why do you care? Why are you letting this cannibalize positive things, et cetera, et cetera. But also by us wanting to present this thing, that's also in part us. Are, we're inspired to become this thing. And without having that, you're not inspired. You're not, you know, you're not seeking something. Um, I only bring that up because you say there's a positive thing and then an ego. And I don't think that they're necessarily different yeah just, that's true it's just is it get when if ego when it's getting in the way exactly that's when it's a negative thing exactly i mean i guess you're right because it's hard to know how we're not calculating as often the times it's leading to something positive we're more calculating when it's getting in the way and i do find it gets in the way a lot yes probably more than it's helping though i don't know i have a I great analogy and I'm sure you're not surprised. Okay, go on. Ego is Michael like salt. Jordan. Everyone's trying to get away from it. We can't have it. The body needs it. Oh. We just find it enough in healthy ways to where you don't have to substitute it with, with salt that is, you know, doesn't have all the proper minerals. Shout okay. out to Betty, by the way, for teaching me about salt. But, but <laughs> sodium, <laughs> it, it, salt has, a dot, I don't know what they all are. But Electrolytes. I know, are you talking about electrolytes? Because I could talk about electrolytes. I'm not talking about electrolytes. Dang. Unless I am. Okay. But, I think you might be, but... Well, there are... Uh, probably. <laughs> but I just know that there's different, a lot of different minerals in salt. That yes. You, that the only way to get the, a full balanced salt That's is right. from the sea. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> a healthy ego is like sea salt. Yeah. It's got a lot of different electrolytes, electrolytes. minerals, electrolytes. and fun things. But, you know, then some salt is mcdonald's fry salt and it gets you know you feels feels important and you want more of it right now mm -hmm. but at the end of the day you need is, some you need salt but let me let me piggyback you do need no. some yes i'm going <laughs> <Okay>. to <laughs> you do need some but when you have too much it's a big problem that's, that's why this it's analogy, such a good analogy. Is, i'm gonna borrow it i'm like the bill nye of <laughs> basketball <laughs> Oh, wow. Okay, now you're throwing even a new loop in. I'm going to write it down to check okay. for later, Bill Nye. I have a, I have a trophy, actually, that's kind of close to what that would mean. Or maybe that's the opposite. I was in a...
comedy basketball league uh, for a bit, mm-hmm. and th- they would give out different awards. Oh. Uh, and one of them that I got was best player, worst comic. Oh. But maybe think my. that's the opposite. Best. I was thinking scientist sure. comic. But <laughs> anyway, best player. <laughs> This is, I could relate to Dax on. And also, if this is too long, you go when you go. But no. there's a world, I think for the audio only, I keep this as one long thing. There's a world where YouTube, I upload this as a separate video. Oh, yeah, great. Um, Dax wants everybody to think he's a good driver. Oh, yes. And this his analogy, big... not analogy, his uh, way of explaining is, if somebody, I remember he said this to me, maybe on the podcast too. If somebody ever said, you're not 6'2", he'd be like, okay, it doesn't affect him because he knows he is. Yes. But the driver, maybe he doesn't know he is. So yeah. it affects him. Um, I actually hear he's not a very good driver. You'll never hear me say that. No, no, we, that will joking. end our friendship. My buddy Brent Morin uh, and I talk about Dax probably every time we see each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, but one of the things <laughs> is Brent was a PA at Conan and oh. talked about when he saw Dax come in with some big truck and then they were the, the people that worked there were going to park it for him. But he goes, no. And he goes, Brent goes, he just one time just does it, backs into it. And he's like, ever since I, I know why you think Dax is cool. He is an v- incredible driver, but I actually, I don't think, because we're in the fact check, I'm going to pick this apart. I, I don't think he's not confident there. He wants people to know because it's part of his identity. Right. Yeah, Being 6'2 yeah, 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 is not really, you know, he just like feels yeah. confident there, but he, but, but. I guess it's, he know, anybody who doesn't think he's 6'2 is, maybe he doesn't think enough people would think that. Well, yeah, and they just like, they don't have eyes or something right. like some there's something wrong with them it's sort well, of what nothing he's wrong with somebody without eyes of, oh god i didn't mean to say that there's <laughs> there's never anything wrong in fact i'm gonna stop there in uh, fact check you're gonna stop there <laughs> the reason i brought that up though was because i about basketball feel the way dax feels about driving oh where, so when i get something that says best player worst comic this isn't a compliment and an insult this is to me, two compliments because of course. it's like when people, I remember somebody said to me, it was, but right before a Cavs game, shout out to Doug Larlam, I believe it was. Uh, he said, this is in Cleveland before I ever moved here, he goes, I don't like wings, but these are amazing. Mm. And I thought, well, then you like wings. But I remember him, he was selling me and how good these wings are. And that's a move people do. Yes. That's what this trophy is doing. Oh, best player, best comedian. Fuck that. They're just on Rick's dick. But if he goes, oh, worst comic, they must mean he's a great ball player. And I'm not worried about people thinking I'm a bad comic. Yes, exactly. But do you, not to get in your head, you know you're a good comic. No, I don't know I'm a good comic. I know that sometimes lightning strikes and there's something special about me. But I, I don't know. Oh, wow. I, 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 yeah, I'm, I, take that, I'm, I think I'm a good comedian. I, yeah. I don't know. I think I have a, I have a ways to go. Um, but... Uh, well, we all have a ways to go. Not with basketball. Oh, wow. I, I have surpassed the best I could <laughs> oh ever be wow. years and years ago. Wow. Um, I forgot what we were saying. What were you bringing up? What was the point you were going to make about people knowing I'm a good basketball player versus comedian? Oh, well, I was just going to say, does it... I assumed you knew for a fact, which you should, that you're a good comic. So I would maybe take that as like the opposite. Like since I am a good co- comic, yeah. it's saying I'm a bad basketball player. No, here's what it is. I'm uh, playing basketball, and I am probably bothering people, and oh, Rick's annoying either because of the jokes that he tells that are too quick and sharp, or because the elbows <laughs> that he throws that are too quick and sharp, uh-huh. but whatever it is, the fact is undeniable, we won four, the Rick Glassmans, our basketball team, there was, oh, there was the wow. improv, there was UCB, there was the comedy store, we were the Rick Glassmans. Oh my God. We won, uh, I think four out of five years, it might have been four out of six. Wow. And... Uh, you know, he's 6'2", six 6'3". Six winning speaks for itself. Yeah. And I have well, a I'll winner's heart. It. Oh, okay. Well, you're a winner. Thank so you. There you go. Okay. But I'm a good basketball player. Yeah, and you know it. But it does seem like you're trying to convince me. Oh, well, I guess this is similar to the driving. Yeah. Well, because I don't know. I haven't seen you play, so you just want me to know that. Do you want me to cut the clips? Yeah. If I, We'll see. I've put them in b- before, but... Whoops. It's our ball. Our ball. Wonderful. Okay, so um, is Magic Cards a number one collectible trading card game? So Magic, I didn't realize during that entire conversation, which is so embarrassing, Magic the Gathering 
Oh, did I never say The Gathering? No. And because you know it so well, that's right. just... And everyone who knows it will also know, so right. it's not a big deal. But I didn't know. But I have, of course, heard of Magic the Gathering. Okay. Still not enough to obviously put two and two together. But first trading card game, approximately 35 million players as of December 2018. So I'm yeah, sure they've gained... a lot gained. more since then. Well, after this episode, who knows? Twenty over twenty billion magic cards produced in the period from two thousand eight to two thousand sixteen. That's a weird fact. It came out in ninety three. That's the time it grew the most popularity. Gotcha. Those are just some interesting facts about Magic the Gathering. Well, I know you said you like limited edition things. Love. And uh, I would like to offer you a limited print run, first edition, first Tyso collectible trading card. I can't take that from Rick you. Rick and Goblin. I'm selling them now. I'm almost sold out, by the way. And I might be by the time this episode comes out. Oh, how much are you selling it for? $17. Oh. Okay, I'll buy it. How much is it worth? $5? Uh, at this point? No, I'd, say, I'd probably say uh, right now $17. In the next <laughs> couple weeks, uh, once they're sold out, I'd say probably low to mid-20s. That's, that's something I'm willing to do. Let me take a look at it. No, I, I, I have to buy it or I won't feel like I earned it. No. <gasps> oh, my God. This is special because it has your name on it. Yeah, so the Goblin is a, is a, huge, uh, a huge part of the podcast. And so, was, uh, I, so is I have a, um, a Hulk 181 that used to be on part of the, the set, uh, which is the first full appearance of Wolverine. So that is, wow. that's uh, the Goblin and me as Hulk and Wolverine. And uh, I want to make sure I get his Instagram right. Uh, uh, Kenneth underscore Scott underscore Hepburn. We'll put the Instagram handle up here. Um, he is a uh, DC and Marvel illustrator. He, d he does comic book stuff and he made that. This is that so cool? cool. I'm working on, because they're limited editions, yeah. and I'm not sure what I'm going to do because, you know, you want to sell stuff, people want them. Yeah. I'm working on, for the first time, I'm making uh, an NFT. So. What's that? You've never heard of an NFT? No. A non-fungible token? Oh, God. I don't know anything. Um, well, I'm not going to get too much into it, but um, <laughs> NFTs are, it's like, it's, um, they're very uh, hot, hot topic right now. Really? It's, it's a blockchain technology where they are like cryptocurrencies, uh -huh. but they're uh, tokens and they have unique uh, addresses and they are treated like collectibles right now as well. Oh, I mean, there's artworks that have been selling for, for 60 plus, I don't remember, I don't know all the things, but millions, millions and millions and millions of dollars for just a piece of art. Oh my God. Just like it would be if a physical piece of art, but anyway. Wow. Uh, and you're going to have one of those? Yeah. I, don't, I mean, I'm not planning on selling them at that kind of price. I don't know if anybody's wow. interested. If you are interested, leave a comment, let me know. I'm interested. I'll sell you an NFT. That, and it'll that'll be my, get you hooked. Oh, oh my God, I'm excited. This is so wonderful. Isn't that cool though? Yes. I mean, especially for people that, because I'm a collector and I like comic book art and that stuff. Yeah. So it's cool. I, You know what I learned though? What's that? I can't open it and I can't smell it those, until I have a hundred million dollars. Yeah, but th those, those, those smells are in packs. Those were not put in packs. Is that it? That's all the facts. This is a, this is a fun... If I had somebody that I was doing my podcast with every week, yeah. this part of it would, f I think would be, I don't know. I can't say it's going to be the most fun because guests are fun and of it's course. a different thing. But this totally feels different. like, uh, this feels like we're still at school, Yeah, but it's the last day before summer. Yeah. <laughs> wow. School. God, the analogies are coming hot and fast. They're so good. It's crazy. Scoop D. <laughs>